Brought to you by Law Nation Sports. Let's get it. Come on. The name is Law Nation. Be sure, and I mean just that, be sure to smash upon the like button. Cowboys final straw with Dak, Prescott, plus more. Mock draft hopes, one thing we all adore. Ready? Run from it. Come on. Destiny arrives all the same. Ain't nobody mad. Let's get it. Ain't no party like a cowboy party. But what about a Law Nation groove? From my studios to yours. Give me a one in the chat if the audio is straight. One, two. Mic check, one, two. Mama said there'll be days just like this. Come on. Stand to your feet. Well, not at all, baby. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Five, four, shout out to you, Sheila. Three, two, Texas Raw. Let's get it. One, let's go. Boom. All right. Appreciate everybody. <laughs> Yeah, hey, action, man, action power. Like, yo, Rich. Hey, we were close, though, action. We were close to getting them 10 racks, man. We were close, man. But shout out to Prize Picks, who's one of the sponsors of this particular live stream as well. We were close, man. We were going to be, we was this close, man. We were, we were this close on hitting $10,000, me and my guy, Action Powers, man. 10000 man. Ten. We had two guys that slipped through, and it was just by one little swing and a miss, and that lets you know, man, you know, when you're using prize pick, never put more in that you ain't <laughs> willing to lose. <laughs> yeah, but you oh, you had 200 on it? Oh, my gosh, man. Shoot, you'd have had my five racks, man. Hey, it is what it is, bro. Hey, hey, hey the next swing around, uh, when we get to that section, follow these picks, man, and I went with less with it. So we, we might can parlay that thing and get back in. So uh, it, it's all fun. You know, it's all fun. So don't take it too serious, ladies and gentlemen, for those who watching. Um, <laughs> Action Power like, man, you must be out your god dog on mine. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Literally, this is what. What more do you want from me? You come closer than close. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate everybody. No original, they never will be. Does it bad? But the real rigs is what happened to LSU? Oh my god. What happened to LSU last night, man? Can somebody help a brother out? What's going on with LSU, man? <laughs> What happened to LSU, y'all? Y- y'all let me know on that end. What happened to LSU before we get into this content creation? You know, what happened to them? <laughs> what happened, Rex? <laughs> she went from talking about basketball to, hey, man, y'all sexualizing me. What's going on, man? <laughs> Oh, my goodness, y'all talking about me. But shout out to her. You know, she got a promising future. But that um, that girl, man, uh, that, that's like a, snipe, a sniper on the other end, Catelyn. Or is it Caitlin? Caitlin? Yeah, I said Catelyn. But Caitlin, whoo, she's sniping that thing, boy. She's, she can shoot. She can shoot. She can shoot. <laughs> Oh, my God, she can shoot, man. Anywhere on the court, she'll give uh, anybody a run for their money. Steph Curry. She, Steph Curry better watch out. She, she snipe, boy. She got a dog. 
<laughs> All right, I'm gonna leave LSU alone, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, hey, hey, shout out to LSU though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clock versus Kerr, bar for bar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. Uh, how them $30 lunches going so far, y'all? $30 lunch is going pretty good. Y'all, y'all, y'all taking the Swedes out for $30 and she getting mad at it? How, how's that going? <laughs> how's that going? I hope all is well with that. You know, I, I, I want to talk about, before we dive into the uh, conversational pool here, uh, my guy Nick Harris, he he brought up these guys that's going to be the Cowboys' thirty day visits, and I think that out of any of these boys that I'm seeing on his list, I wouldn't like them. I would love them here, representing the silver and the blue and the star on the side of the helmet. I would love to see us going and getting the uh, the the, uh, the Fuaga. <laughs> I'm going to mess up some of these guys' names, man. They're giving a hard time for a guy from Mississippi a, t- a time over here, man. They're giving me a rough challenge with these names, man. Uh, but Fuaga, Fuaga and Neum, I think that he will be a good situation for us. Uh, even though I'm kind of in the middle, I, I do like uh, – Hey, I'm, I'm Jerry Jones Jr., 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 on the, on the Dark brother side because – I do like our guys. I, I do. I do like our guys. I like Tyler Smith. Uh, oh, yeah, I like T.J. Bass. Yeah, yeah, I like T.J. Bass. I, I like Brock Hoffman, what he can probably bring to the table. Zach Martin. You know, I don't even put the T in his man, in, in, in man's name. I like Terrence Steele. I, I like those boys. I, I think that with another uh, a year with Mike Solari, I think that that could be a tangible thing. Hey, hey, put that butter knife down. Don't shank me now. Don't shank me now. Don't shank me with the butter knife, y'all. <laughs> Somebody like, Law, you must be, what my button at right here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, that's a problem, man. Law, Law, Law be out of his mind. What my button at? You must be out of your goddamn mind. <laughs> I do, man. I, I'm just telling y'all what I like. I'm not saying that I like raisins in my uh, potato salad, but I'm just saying I like those guys. I didn't say I love them now, you know. Uh, I got my dark horses. Yeah, he TJ will be one of my dark horses. Ernest says, what's up, law? Love the show. Always how about them Cowboys? Have a wonderful day. Have a, have a wonderful blessed day. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> Yeah, somebody who's been putting them raisins in there, they, 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 keep, they, be, they keep being mad at me every time I say that. <laughs> Look at look at Chris. Chris, ah! Why are you shaking me, man? Shame. 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 <laughs> I do, man. I, I know we have PTSD. I we 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 angry, we frustrated. That's why I, I'm an optimistic dude, you know. My beard stopped growing because y'all mad. So I, I watched, I went to the sink, I saw all my hair falling out, man. I'm sitting here, I'm turning gray. I'm be, about to be Moses over here. I'm probably be Moses' age by the time we win one, but it, it is what it is, you know. I'm sitting here thinking that, you know, when we look, I did a video on, you know, the office of line may may improve from where it is and you know some people like hey law put the kool-aid down man let the ai speak let me go let the ai speak on it Ernest yeah. ellsbury jr ten dollars what's up law of the show always how about them cowboys have uh, a wonderful blessed day how about them man appreciate you man thank you for your support <laughs> Jay Lombard, log on a law. <laughs> That's what it's going to be. Yeah, shout out to my guy. And, uh, you know, his birthday was last month and everything, and I, and I know he's still celebrating. All right, so, but I do like the Fuaga kid. Uh, Bucky Irving, uh, it, Mr. Biggs, Mr. Biggs, they call me Mr. Big, but not because of my size. You know, he's a small dude, but he runs with authority, and I'm not going to say he's Emmett or something like that. But if you look at how he runs and if you look at how he catch out of the backfield, squirt and squeeze down inside and being able to have the vision and the wherewithal, you know, y'all didn't hear that in a long time, the wherewithal to get out of bounds. I, I like Bucky. I like Bucky. Uh, Trey Benson. Oh, my goodness, man. If we get if we get Trey Benson over here, I, I... 
Because it will open up different parts and regions in my mind if we get a Benson here. You know, I do like Trey. And if it was me in this draft, since this draft class, as it relates to running backs or what have you, and knowing the need that we have and knowing that we can't really depend on the guys that we have here like the regardless of what we can say about Rico, he's been hurt guy, right? He's been a guy that had probably a half of a year last season that we said, oh, wow, look at him, give him more opportunities, right? Malik Davis, maybe he is the man that can give us a something, but when his number and his name was called, he disappeared. So he's Houdini right now. Uh, Deuce Vaughn, he is the biggest question mark because – we all like the storyline, and there ain't nobody in here that's going to say, hey, ain't nobody in here going to say, man, hey, man, I don't like the storyline of Deuce Vaughn. Because there's some of y'all right now that's watching, stop playing football because you thought you was too small because you five foot eight or you five foot nine, or even if you six foot and you stop playing football because somebody told you that you was too small. <laughs> But you see this guy who five foot four or five foot five with the cleats on or what have you, uh, 130 pounds, whatever how big he is, he ain't that big. He's about 160, 170, give or take on what day that he ate. But it is what it is. You seeing him being able to be drafted, the storyline is good because a third of y'all knew that y'all would have did the same job if you're working for the Cowboys and you see your son that everybody else passing up on, but you have the ultimate faith and belief in your son and you got a chance to pull the trigger, you're going to try to figure out a way to say, hey, man, get my son on, man. Come on. Shout out to you, Sean. Yeah, 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 yeah. So – so, so Chris Chris Blunt says, Deuce Vaughn is your height. Yeah. So he's five foot five. So we all un- understand the storyline. Now, can he play? One thing we all can say for sure, he can damn sure play preseason. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Deuce Vaughn. Deuce Vaughn was good in preseason. Now. Preseason, you know. He was really good. He's all-star. Everybody like, Deuce. It's just a regular season. So he's going to graduate from preseason, and he's going to get to the regular season, this season, you know, and he's going to scale and go up from here. I, I have faith in you, Deuce. Come on, baby. <laughs> so from the preseason to the regular season, he's going to do this number. And for those who say, hey, man, <laughs> who kid they got out there? They're going to be like, hey, man, look at that kid that's scoring touchdowns, right? <laughs> Deuce going to be loose. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And so I, I just have the ultimate thing that this dude been working all off season. He hear the noise, right? He understand. And he's going to figure out a way. I'm not, but what the Cowboys got to do and uh, the front office and everything, look, <clears throat> you can't go into the 2024 season with the mindset and the ideology that he, that he will be the end all be all guy. Nah, you can't do that. Don't do that to us. Don't do that to us. Okay. So that's why I can love to have the ideology that you have a Trey Benson and you have a deuce. I've seen too many mock drafts where you can get a Trey in the third, the third round, you know? So that's a great thing for us, ladies and gentlemen. Because you don't have to spend the first and the second round for Trey Benson. And then you match that up and you marry that up. And some of the worries and some of the frustrations that we may have with this team can can dissipate and go away, disappear. <sighs> Just like that. Because when y'all see Trey Benson out there running around, and I hope they give him a clean number too if he's drafted by the Cowboys. Give him a nice number so we can see him really run. I, I think the numbers play a role in it. You know, I think Deuce would have been better if he just wore number two. Or just give him, get him out of 42. Deuce would look a little bit better, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be hard to see him. But you can see the four and the two out there in the backfield. He don't belong. See the center for the uh, Oregon, Jackson Powers Johnson. I'm torn between the two, Graham Barton and uh, Jackson Powers Johnson. I, I, I was looking at both of those tapes and, and I overlooked Graham and then I started to look back at it 
And I'm sitting here thinking like, hey, hey, I like the nastiness. I need to know from y'all in the chat, do you prefer JPJ or GB? Just put GB in the chat or put JPJ. Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. What? And then think about this. Solari, he's a, a poor trap scheme. You're going to run. You're going to get out in space. That's why last season, you know, we had a lot of our offensive line guys with poor hammies. So, so you're going to have to get out in space. Steal them boys, uh, JPJ over Graham Barton. Yeah. Uh, Jay, Jay Lombardi says, shoot, I'll take whoever, man. <laughs> I'll take whoever. As long as we got Tyra Smith up out of the paint and Tyler B. Otters, man. As long as those boys not coming back, we, 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 we'll we take whoever. You know, I feel you, though. I feel you. Let me see what y'all say. Mm, Rev says, GB at left guard, Tyler Smith back to left tackle. That will be nasty. Oh, yeah, that would be nasty. Uh, we need interior guys on both lanes. It would be – I will I will leave it to Will. This is from Italian, the Stallion Cowboy. Appreciate you, bro. Um, and, and the Cowboys tend to do that. They tend to leave things up to Will McClay to be the, uh, the person that can bail them out. And on the back ends of these drafts, we, we've been given a lot of hope for those guys. And even if you look at the uh, thumbnail here, uh, I'm not making it a segue yet, yet, but this guy to the far right of the screen, uh, Jalen Tolbert, this got to be his year that he can make some movements and turn some heads. And uh, number 15 for this team, this got to be the year whereas we see something out of him, whether it be Oxnard and training camp as well as preseason we need to see why we spent five and a half million dollars for him, right? And see if he can battle out the Cooper Rush thing. And Cooper Rush, he's a poised guy. I think the Cooper Rush is going to get him busy work going. So we got to see those things. Uh, with that being said, uh, let's segue a little bit into uh, this, this, this positional point, and then we will run a few mock drafts, and then we'll open up the phone lines. And we will uh, go over our sponsors and things like that that's keeping this channel afloat during the off season. And I really appreciate each and every last one of you all. If you guys can do me a huge favor, let's go ahead and hit that like and get that going for me um, before we get things uh, too far down the way. I know people forget. People forget, man. People forget. <laughs> Hey, man, I forgot to hit that like button for my boy, you know. Hit that like button for me, man. Just put a one in the chat afterwards, right? Let me know. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. All right. Y'all know when I play this, I'm about to play something else. And let's get right to it. Give me a one in the chat. Shout out to everybody. And on my YouTube side, let me just tell y'all. Y'all are allowing Facebook to whoop y'all tail. Because my Facebook, they interacting, they liking, they sharing. The numbers on Facebook is body slamming YouTube. So what's up, YouTube? Come on, man. What's going on with y'all, man? What? What? What more do you want from me? What's going on, <laughs> man? What? Do I need to have a feedback box? Riggs! Y'all still mad at me, YouTube? <laughs> All right. So the Cowboys could have given Dak another deal, Dave Hellman. You know this better than anybody. And not to, at least not yet. Mm. Which means Dak Prescott Shady is going to play the last year of his deal. This is completely unheard of. You don't let franchise quarterbacks, you don't let all pro quarterbacks, you don't let the face of your organization go into the last year of his deal. No because doubt. he might wise up and say, you know what? Don't sign me. I want to hit free agency. Shady, you've seen big time paper in your. I don't want to hear Shady's opinion, but I want to know can y'all hear that audio? Or do I have my feed too, <laughs> too loud? <laughs> Let me know. Uh, but <clears throat> I want to hear Dave Hellman's uh, opinion of this, and then, then we, we can go back and forth from here. Of course, this is the daily DAC conversation. I think I need to have like a, 
a segue box to just jump out and say the daily dot conversation right all right so let me see if i can fast forward just a little bit because i don't care about the other people on there mm -hmm. cowboys at this point and obviously keep it because then he would have done more but at this all right here we go when first round against who the youngest team in the end it's too low the volume ah I'm, I'm trying to fix it. I'm gonna have to build a plane while we fly. Then the volume too low. It do sound muffled and low, but but that's why we here, baby. You know what I'm saying? I got no producer in my ear, but I sound good, though. I don't. I sound good. <laughs> All right, yeah. All right, boom. We are gonna go it this way. Hopefully, we can bump up the audio. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, it was real low. Okay, good. I see it now. I'm gonna put it in another system here. Give me one second. It's loading up over here. How y'all feeling though, Leroy? Audio loud and clear. Left my guy Leon Ware. You related to Demarcus Ware? Right here. Now play my audio. Five, four, three, two. So the Cowboys could have given Dak another deal, Dave Hellman. You know this better than anybody. They've chosen not to, at least not yet. Mm. Which means Dak Prescott Shady is going to play the last year of his deal. This is completely unheard of. You don't let franchise quarterbacks, you don't let all pro quarterbacks, you don't let the face of your organization go into the last year of his deal because he might wise up and say, you know what? Don't sign me. I want to hit free agency. Shady, you've seen... I don't care about Shady's thoughts and opinions, so we're not going to listen to Shady because I know he's going to be Shady. So <clears throat> I do like Acho's way of he's trying to be as much as possible objective with his delivery. He tries. He tries, <laughs> but the eagle green stuff still seeps out on him. So they brought in Dave Hellman, Tiny Jim who I believe in the hearts of hearts, one of the, and I'm not saying this because, you know, he support Dak Prescott, by the way, because y'all all know that he's objective in his approach. If you've seen the post game thoughts of what we look like versus the Green Bay Packers, I think that Tiny Jim, Dave Hellman, David Hellman, did a great job of being fair and balanced with his approach. But what he come up with is, is something that we all said that they tend to do, and we're going to let him say it, you know. Dave is, a wise, Dave is a wise fan. That's from Italian Cowboy. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, when he originally came here to the Cowboys to do his piece, that I think that I thought that he wasn't even a Cowboys fan. So that's what made it really good for him, right? I think that and he could be a Cowboy fan. I could be off. But he helped. My guy, Brian Broadus, with his writing, he helped Brian Broadus to be a little, you know, more <laughs> objective himself, you know, because Brian Broadus would have one singular view of things, and it took Tiny Jim at the time to steer the ship back way, back to the way, to good ways, right? But it's been a long time, though, baby. Let me know, is, uh, and I haven't watched the uh, Cowboys.com in a long time. But is um, is Brian Broaddus still doing anything with uh, Mickey Spags? Because they used to get into good fights, man. It, 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 are they still doing shows together? <laughs> there used to be some good fights on that one. Yeah, yeah, let me know. Big time paper in your career, and you've seen big time performances. Will this be that? here fast forward yeah. the will the operative word there is will this be Dak Prescott's last season in Dallas I think so now I do think it depends on how the season ends but it's almost scientific mm -hmm. Cowboys at this point we know what the cycle is we know what they have I don't know how they could have possibly been better than they were last year Very I don't true. know how they could have been better than they were at home last year mm -hmm. none of it mattered it still ended up the exact same way mm -hmm. he's gonna be great during the regular season he's gonna put up incredible numbers they're going to win the division or be competing for the division. They're going to be in okay. the postseason, and okay. then they're okay. going to disappoint. Yeah. It happens every single year. Sounds about right. So, if 
if that changes, then I think my answer will change. Yeah. Because if you can get, if Dak Prescott can get the Cowboys over that hump, which really means just getting to the NFC Championship game. I'm not even talking about the Super Bowl because there's no need for us to associate the Super nope. Bowl with the Dallas Cowboys. You, at you, this you, you, damn! We got every year as a chance, man. Teams change throughout the course of the year. Believe it or not. <laughs> All right, so let me get to the sweet parts of it. And I give it what she's saying. Boy, it's been a long time since we've been into these type of places. In the last eight to maybe going into the nine seasons now, we have at least been in the situation whereas we are in the playoffs. Even in two, even in 2017, we still won nine games, I believe, went nine and seven. 2000 and uh, I want to say 19, eight and eight. Eight and eight year, yeah. Those are your two probably worst years of Dak Prescott. A nine and seven and an eight and eight season, which I don't want to break down that because if we start to break down that, then it's, it's going to lead people blindly into the wrong situation. Because let me just say this that's when people were talking about, hey man, you know, when we needed that one game, he couldn't deliver. But if I did a blind resume and I showed y'all this, shh. 4,901 yards, 30 touchdowns to 11 interceptions. People will say, hey, they would take that. They, they would take that. And, and most people will say they can't even use the argument of, you know, empty calories or, uh, you know, pad stat, what is it, pad stat Prescott, something like that, whatever, whatever nickname y'all gave them. But we wasn't generating these type of things previously you know but it is what it is let's listen to more of this right quick before we dive into to, into some more detail point so get to the nfc championship game if he can do that not only do i think he should stay regardless of what the market is because nothing is going to be better than him winning like that in dallas but i think that dallas should obviously keep him because yeah. then he would have done more but at this point while I think Dak Prescott is better than a lot of quarterbacks in the NFL, when you're talking about those numbers and all the guys that Shady just mentioned you have to pay, what are you actually paying for? Regular season performances? There's cheaper quarterbacks than that. And at this point, you keep saying you want to get over the hump. The problem is, lady, there are probably cheaper quarterbacks than that, but you won't get that result. That's the only problem on top of that. What the Cowboys got to do is understand. Just hear me out. <laughs> hear me out. Lord, have mercy. Just build around that. Just build around that. If you know that you got that going for you, right? Then just build around that. That's all that matters. Build around that. Don't take it away. Keep that momentum going. Fight for what is good. And then on top of that, continue to build around that. And the Cowboys, unfortunately, don't know how to do that. I think there's something to being close to just keep, you know, you, you're there every single year and eventually you break through. And then there's a very fine line between that and doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And to me, I think that's what the Cowboys are because the team, I don't know how you could have been better than you were last year. Dak Prescott couldn't have been better than he was last year. He was an all pro for the first time in his career. He had the best season of his career. And now they're talking about ushering that out. Yeah, I, I love this right here. Adam Payton says build around then just like Purdy. In the Niners, anyone can plug into that elite offense. You're right. What's the focal point of Shannon Hand systems? It's not even the quarterback. The quarterback is the byproduct of what they do. The quarterback's still going to get the credit. What was the, like, even if you go back to the Broncos, what was the principle of the daddy Shannon hand? 
Was it John Elway or was it Terrell Davis? They had the ability, the finite ability to run the ball. Elway was always good. We get all of that. He been to multiple Super Bowls, right? He was good. Could he win you the big games? I don't think so. You <laughs> know, until you gave him run game and great defenses. You see, here's my number one thing or gripe with, even with some of the Cowboy fan base. I get it. Dak Prescott by himself is not a quarterback that's going to win you games. And I get that. But you can still build around that. Law, do you have any truth to that? Brock Purdy by himself will not win you games. But dog it, when you have CMC, when you have that front blocking for him, and when you have two wide receivers and a granted from within the confines of that particular system you can work and operate with that but you take you take those pieces away <laughs> y'all see what Brock Purdy look like L A J J says Elway won big games against Cleveland that's his signature win He couldn't beat Washington, though. <laughs> he couldn't beat Washington. He couldn't beat the Redskins in the Super Bowl. I'm just playing with you. Doug, Doug, Doug dropped back and beat the brakes off of them, you know. <clears throat> Zev says Tom Brady won with no names. I knew this day would happen. I knew this day will happen. I knew that once Tom Brady retired, people will forever say, hey, he had nobody out there, man. Oh, my goodness, man. He had the 30th ranked defenses out there, man. He had the 15th ranked defense. He had the 10th ranked. No. Ty Law was trash, Law. Tlaib was trash. Revis was trash, Law. You know, defense don't win you championships. Oh, my goodness. When he went to Tampa Bay, man, you know, Shaq Barrett, all of those boys, big, big boy, that Vita Bay, all those boys were trash, man. That wasn't Tom Brady. I knew that people were only going to look at Tom Brady. And then I, then I knew that people was going to bury Bill Belichick after Tom Brady left and thinking that Mac Jones was going to be the guy to pick up the pieces. To Bill Belichick's defense, he had Mac Jones going to the playoffs. But people want to quantify the fact that when Tom Brady went to the Buccaneers, granted, they won the Super Bowl. But shoot, did y'all did y'all took the time to see the weapons that came with him? <clears throat> now, the year that he had Moss and Gronkowski, of course they didn't win that Super Bowl. <laughs> they was damn near undefeated. <clears throat> yeah. Zev says, Roy says, put Tom on last year's Cowboys. They will win the Super Bowl. Which, which Tom? You ain't talking about the 46 and a half year old Tom, right? You know, me and Tom the same age. You ain't talking about, you ain't talking about Tom, that Tom Brady, right? You talking about maybe a 30 year old Tom Brady or early 40 year old Tom Brady. But you need to go back and see on that Broncos, or not on the Broncos team, but on that Buccaneers team, can somebody name the linebackers that was going around, flying around the year he won? And can somebody tell me uh, all of the accolades of what that defense was able to do there? People fail to realize, now I get it, Tom Brady is nice. 
I think that if the Cowboys were to make a move on Tom Brady, the greatest thing would, that would have happened would have been the fact that other free agent guys would have followed, though. Uh, that That's something that I can all say, you know. Other free agents would have followed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Other free agents would have said, you know what, I won't play with Tom Brady. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'll take a, 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 a small, slight discount to be over here. That I will tell you. You're right with that. But there's no way, there's no way we'll be in a shootout with Tom Brady against Green Bay Packers. There's no way. Y'all see what happened in the last shootout with <laughs> Y'all saw what happened? Can, can somebody put down in the chat what was the score of Tom Brady last game ever played in the National Football League? Can somebody put that score down? And what team was it? You know, and what did that? What did he look like in that game? Can y'all tell me what was the score of the last time y'all seen Tom Brady put on a uniform? While y'all dig that research up, let's go ahead. And what happened, mm. Dave? They lost in the playoffs. When? <laughs> First round. Against who? The youngest team the in the youngest. You, you could just you could just ask like, what always happens, Dave? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is, like, it, is it my turn? <laughs> let me let me hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on because I will Dave say that we hear a lot of Cowboys conversations on national television, but whenever there's a Cowboys conversation, I truly believe there's no better voice to hear from than the one to my left, Dave Hellman. Dave, you and I were working in Dallas at the Star when yeah. Dak Prescott was drafted. You worked for the Cowboys before the Star existed, going back to Valley Ranch. Oh, the you worked building for itself, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, not the no, 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 before the, the before yeah. the building existed. So of all the voices you all ever hear, listen to radio, television, podcast, etc., about the Cowboys, the voice that you are about to hear is probably the most credible as it pertains to really knowing the end side scoop. So Dave, let me ask you this. Will it be Dak Prescott's last season in Dallas? No, it won't be Dak's last season. <laughs> and and look, actually listen to Dave and he gives a finite reason why this would not be Dak Prescott last season here or the final straw. Because of one thing that we all know for sure and it starts with an F of what the Jones family do. And y'all can put that word out. You know what I'm saying? It starts with an F. Here, here's the difference. So y'all were gracious enough to bring me on here in 2022, and we've been having this dance ever since, right? And I'll actually, I'll meet you, Shady, and you, Joy, halfway, and even say a lot of the stuff that y'all just said is true, and it's fair. But I do think y'all are. Well, thank you. Y'all are more worried about how things should be yeah. and not how they will be. We'll get not there. how there the go. business of the NFL works. Real quick, answer me quickly. Has Kirk Cousins accomplished more in his career than Dak Prescott? No, sir. No. no. You could say it's equal. He hasn't done more. That's correct. What just happened to him? He tore his Achilles five years older than Dak Prescott and signed yeah. a major, major extension because that is the value of quality quarterback play in the NFL, regardless of what yeah. happens once the postseason starts. If you're capable of being a franchise guy and leading a team to playoff caliber records on a regular basis, they fold, you yeah. get paid. Dak Prescott will get paid by somebody next year. It almost doesn't matter how he plays, almost. He does need to play well, preferably stay healthy, but as long as he does what he's done his entire career, mm -hmm. never had a losing record, by the way, in his entire NFL career, mm -hmm. he's going to be in line for a major contract. But where? Thank in you. that's the Thank question. You. Where? You didn't say it. You <laughs> the didn't answer. Say it. You said no, somewhere. The answer is in Dallas, and here's why. And here's. Here's I've had what? a lot of time to think about this because honestly, this is the closest Damn. to a crisis of faith as I've ever had. Because look, that I told you all this last time I was on. That Green Bay game stunk. <laughs> And he Dak was part of it. The defense was as well, but Dak played poorly in that game. He the reason lying. I think he stays in Dallas, and this is what I've had a lot of time to think about, I think the Cowboys will cave. I think the Cowboys will at some point recognize, oh, it's scary out there in no quarterback land. What did Arthur Blank just do? He suffered through three years of miserable quarterback play after Matt Ryan left and paid Kirk Cousins, who hasn't accomplished as much as Dak Prescott. What might the Patriots do at the top of this draft? Draft a quarterback because Robert Kraft is sick of having not Tom Brady. It sucks to not have a quarterback 
The Cowboys know that at the end of the day, and we have a track record that suggests that they do this. They talked tough about Zeke Elliott. He skipped out on training camp. What happened? They gave him the biggest running back contract in the NFL. They talked tough about Demarcus Lawrence, their star edge rusher. What happened? They eventually caved and gave him a huge defensive end contract. When a guy is worth paying, they usually pony up eventually, and it won't be any so different. So you here. tell me. So <clears throat> that's what I'm going to stop you right there. They fold every time. <laughs> And they warrant unnecessary conversations. Now, we can argue the three times they didn't fold. D. Ware, DeMarco Murray, Dez Bryant to a degree. And they was terrified of Dez. Oh, fix this, Rich! <laughs> Dez, they were scared. And then... Then Dad's probably figure out, man, Rich got some stuff on them. He got hidden tapes and stuff. Shoot. That's three times they, man, they done folded and unfolded. They unfolded on D-Ware. And I can bet you my bottom dollar, y'all, if we, if, oh, my gosh, man, if we would just held on to D-Ware for one more year, man, just one more year. Oh, my goodness, man. We wouldn't have been talking about Aaron Rodgers running around with one leg, you know, and carving us up in that playoff game. Y'all come on, man. <laughs> yeah, they fool around and find out, Law. Yeah, yeah, they fool around and find out. But every other <laughs> they, they just got pissed off at Amari Cooper. You know, Amari Cooper was like, I ain't finna take no jab, man. I see y'all suckers, man, 10, 15 years from now. You know what I'm saying? Growing a third eyeball and an extra earlobe. I ain't for no, 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 no. It ain't enough research on that. And is, is Amari Cooper living okay and fine without that that jab? Yeah. But, but the John was like, hey, you got to toe that line. You got to get that jab. Nope. Nope. And they sent him off to Siberia, you know, the football land, the Cleveland. And every time, every, all this last season, we were looking up highlight tapes of him in Cleveland. Cleveland, we saw him doing crazy things. And the, the, the other part of this problem with the Cowboys is that we wear our emotions on our sleeves. We do. We don't know how to understand that, yeah, we lost. We got beat bad in the playoffs run that thing back 2021 run that back in 2022 with Amari Cooper as much we had people literally saying that hey man if you look at it man shoot Noah Brown he doing what Amari Cooper wasn't able to do and I was like nah man don't, don't, don't take that that's that fool's goal. If we were 12 and 5 in 2022, can you imagine what we would have been with an Amari Cooper plus a lamb? Don't get rid, don't be shooting yourself in the foot. <laughs> that's that's the problem with us, man. We we like right now they're ready to cave and, and destroy everything. All I'm saying, I'm yelling, like, hey. That's okay. That's okay. Let's just go get it. Look, we were 12 and 5 last season. Not 5 and 12. The earth is the earth is not it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Pump the brakes, Cowboy Nation. On offense, we know that we got the groove going that we had one of the better area attacks as passing the ball than any team in the National Football League. Where were our inefficiencies on offense? Just running the ball. Just go get your running back. Get you an offensive lineman. That's what I was saying. We know what we got. We got good Jake Ferguson. We got a good Jake Ferguson. You got you a tight end. You got you a C.D. Lamb that's breaking records that the playmaker's been doing. He broke every record or every other record, but the playoff records and Super Bowl records of what wide receivers been doing. He is historically, and I'm talking about C.D. Lamb. How many years he's been in the league, ladies and gentlemen? 
And he put up more yards, more touchdowns, I believe, and receptions than any 88 that ever wore it. <clears throat> so you keep that. You got that in your back pocket, bro. Jerry, you got so So don't hesitate to pay that. You got that. Think about the names that wore 88. He's better than Drew Pearson. He's better than Michael Irvin. He's better than Dez Bryant. No other 88 been doing the 88 things that CD is doing. So you get that. You put that on the shelf. You got a good thing going. Jake Ferguson, you saw him getting busy. You got you a good tight end. Put that on the shelf. All you got to do is correct the run game. You don't have to burn the whole thing down. I get it. Green Bay whooped our ass. They beat us down. They had us thinking that, hey, man, we can't ever beat teams in the playoffs. But understand the reason why you didn't beat Green Bay. Were there ever a chance for you running the ball? Let me see if I can play this. I want to play this music back again, baby. I'm, I'm getting crunk, baby. I'm getting crunk. <clears throat> I'm getting crunk over here. <laughs> Off-season crunk. Whew. Just, just imagine that. All right, so you get that going. And let's roll over to the defense. And you sit down, Jerry, John Stephen Jones, and Charlotte Jones, Jerry Jr., all of the Jones, Spalding Jones, you know, Jones Jr., 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 Jones, all of the Jones. Even Romo Kid Jones. I think he named his kid Jones. Romo Jones. You sit them all in a room. And y'all say, hey, for one year, for the Cowboy fans, let us just think about the Dallas Cowboys. Bump all of the radio or rodeo stuff. The boxing stuff. Let's just focus on one thing right now, and that's winning the Super Bowl and making sure we can be our best. We stretched out thin. Just focus on the Cowboys. Focus in on the Dallas Cowboys. Y'all know that y'all going to the playoffs. You know you're going to the playoffs. You got that in the back. You can win regular season games. Look at your defense and say to yourself, okay. We couldn't stop a nosebleed. Teams were running at will. They were able to run at will. They can pick a gap, A gap, B gap, C gap, make a gap. They was able to run. How do we stop that? Well, we got to solidify our front. We got to anchor in. Mozzie, yes. He got a shoulder that he had surgeries on. On top of that, his get off, his burst, his hands, everything. He need to work on everything. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Y'all know football enough to know that this kid need help. And it's not going to happen overnight. So you take Mozzie and say, okay, we move him to the shelf. He ain't going to be good until the year 2026 or 2027 at least, you know. Was it a wasted pick? Maybe so. But don't make that be your chief cornerstone of your defense of the interior. You go into this free agency and you, you, you look through every line and you send who can make impact plays, who can get upfield, who can at least generate five to six sacks from the interior because we haven't had that stuff since the 90s. Well, well technically since Jason Hatcher. Why is that so important? Well, it's important, ladies and gentlemen, so that your linebacker can go hook to flat, so they can shoot through A gap and B gap, so that they won't get gobbled up or swallowed up with an offensive lineman getting to the next level because he's blowing through your defensive interior guys. We like what Osa can bring to the table. Osa is a hell of a get off guy. The inefficiency things that we seen out of Mozzie also don't have those things. He got good get off. He got good pad levels. He can burst and get up field. The only problem with Osa, he don't have the size. So he can't go for 60 reps like that. You need to pair him up with somebody else. That's all we've been saying. So you got Osa, you know you got a guy that got high motor, but he fizzles out. Just got to be true to yourself on the defense. He fizzles out in November and December. I love you, dog. Shout out to you, Osa. But you light body, you're, you're a smaller dude. 
So let's match him up with a bigger person next to him. Traditional defense. No Diddy. Yeah, yeah, I've got to put no Diddy on that. <laughs> and you got to understand that D-Law is a long tooth. He ain't gonna, he ain't gonna give you double digit sacks. But one thing you know for sure, on law side, that hell, you're not gonna run the ball that way. You're not gonna run the ball that way. So what you can do to combat against that, get you a downhill linebacker, not a coverage linebacker, to play on his side. A downhill linebacker that can cover a little bit, but primarily he can come downhill and he can get those sacks for you. D-Law can be your guy that's going to be able to contain. That side of the defense, you good now. Parsons, Parsons is Parsons. He's generational. You know what you got out of him. You know what you can get. You are at least going to get anywhere between 12 to 14 sacks guaranteed. You know you're going to get that. Is he good on stopping the run while he's on the line? The answer to that is no. That's not his strong suit. I don't foresee him getting better at that. He's 15 to 20 pounds light at that. Historically speaking, there's never been a shutdown edge defender that's light like that. Those are just limitations. That's like expecting Muggsy Bowles to dunk on you all the time or expecting Shaq to shoot the three. Shaq, we drew up the play. Why you ain't executing? Well, he, that's not his position. Is he still a dynamic player down in the paint? Yes, but not on the perimeter. Do you get rid of Shaq because he can't win you games on the perimeter? It goes to it goes to how you formulate your team. And for the life of me, the Cowboys just don't understand the way that they have the talent on this team. But then when we lose the game, y'all all want to point it at the person that, hey, why you got Shaq shoot threes anyway, you know? <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. But the Cowboys will have all of the talent and expect Shaq to shoot the three. <laughs> hey, man, three sell jerseys, man. The Cowboys are so brilliant with their talent. Even if we had Michael Jordan, I'm using basketball as a reference, right? So you guys can see how foolish the Cowboys be. Man, let's make Jordan a power forward, man. He can play power forward, man. Oh, let's make him the center. We'll put, we'll put Luke Longley on, on, the, on the shooting guard spot, you know, and we supposed to win games. He got talent. And wonder why you lose. Instead of Phil Jackson being the coach, hey, man, you know, hey, Steve Kerr, we, we, we seen in the future that you're going to be a good coach. We're going to cut Phil Jackson. And Steve Kerr, since Jordan punched you in the face, we're going to make you the coach then. Noah Beats says this was one of a kind. We can get a CD Lamb again. No, Beats, you you falling into the Cowboys trap, man. <laughs> There's only one, Des Bryant. There's only one CD Lamb. And if what CD Lamb was able to do, if that was just something simple to do, then not only did he break and bust open a Cowboys record, I thought that it was also an NFL record. How come other how come other wide receivers are not eligible to beat out the records that he was able to do? If you could find another guy. <sighs> if that the case, Noah, how come Cooper Cup didn't break that record when he was getting all of those targets? Hmm? From the 9-10 UN, talk to me. 
Law, what's up with you? Not much, bro. Talk to me. What you got? Hey, this, 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 this Ocho. This too cool. Ocho, I, I, I already know. I see. I know I'm going to start spitting fire. You're going to use this for the nightcap, man. Talk to me, though. <laughs> hey, hey. So, so two things, man. Two things. People got to be careful, man, when they start talking about comparing Tom Brady and Dak Prescott together, man. Because we got to go back and look at those contracts that, that Tom Brady had. Tom Brady wasn't getting 50 and $60 million a year. Um, to play Tom Brady was one of those players he really wanted to win and he wanted people around him to eat too so he had to make that sacrifice on salary I know everybody gonna say he was married to a model which is a, that's still good too though but yeah, he still make that sacrifice that like hey I'm gonna let I'm gonna, I'm gonna share this money with somebody that's not gonna do that and then you had a call the other day too that said um, we, you gotta start talking about Patrick Mahomes and Tom Brady no you gotta talk about Patrick Mahomes more at the beginning of the year, everybody was complaining and laughing and making all kind of memes about those receivers that played for Kansas City Chiefs. But at the end of the year, they won the Super Bowl. Why did, why did they, they were able to win because they have a system and a philosophy and a formula all together. I, I get with what you said, but they, they took a flyer at uh, a, a guy. What's his name? Kavant, what's his name? What's his name? Kadarius Tony. Mm-hmm. We can make a strong argument that if they didn't make that free agency move or pick them up, no, nah, they cut them, right? The, 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 uh -huh. the, the um, Giants cut them last year, and they scooped them up. You can make an argument that if they didn't make that move, the, the Eagles would have won that Super Bowl. That, that's true. That's true, but, but we, to me, the law that takes away the greatness from Patrick Mahomes. Like, Patrick Mahomes enhances those around him. I think that, Michael Parsons is generational. That, that, like I that think, do. I think Pat, he he I do. Think Mahomes Pat Mahomes do elevate. He do elevate. He do elevate the, the players around him. I will give you that. Okay, so so and Michael Parsons to me elevates players around him to a certain degree as well. It just seems like everybody is rushing to either say fire I mean throw Dak away or everybody is rushing to say it ain't that. Well it's something. Because Dak didn't come up on the net, and J Dak didn't say, "Hey, I take I take this fifty-five million dollars, and you know what? Take five of it or seven of it, and then go pay Derrick Henry. Bring in Derrick Henry. It's not like Dak saying, "Hey, uh, go get some talent. Bring it in here. You know what? I owe the damn Cowboy Nation. I owe the I know I owe these Cowboy fans a Super Bowl. Let me help you, Jerry Jones, go get a Super Bowl. Let's 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 go to the table and let's talk about it and let's make this stuff work. Dak not doing that shit either, though. I, I get I get that, but the only thing that anybody will hold their reservations on is that this dude was getting paid dog food money, right? All the way up until 2019, and they still didn't go out there and get anything, right? They they still wasn't out there trying to will and deal and get people. And when we had the $90 million available on the table, they didn't pull the trigger at all. They went out to the Ontario Pole. George Iloka, you know what I'm saying? Those are the guys that they got when they had nine. Look, look, hear, hear me out, Ocho. $90 million. They didn't do it then. So what's going to make them do it now if they didn't do it then? That's all I'm saying. But, Law, when that, that $90 million, even though they had those players, those players are gone. Where's the $90 million at now? That's, that's why I keep trying to ask everybody, where is this money that the Cowboys are stroke cap? Uh, heavy on right now. I, I cannot see it. You, Parsons is not being paid. CD right. Lamb not being paid. Dak getting paid fifty two million dollars. We already know Martin got paid. You just like Tyra Smith. Tyra Smith just signed with the Jets. I'm just trying to figure out where the coins at. Well, I'm I'm just saying that they they have a a, a philosophy, a principle that they're going to go by, regardless of whether or not Dak is getting paid or not. Nah, you know, and. If they didn't, even if they said, okay, Dak, we're going to hold your feet to the fire and not pay you and you're going to play out your final year and then you can hit the open market. They had the, oppor uh, the opportunity to touch Trayvon Diggs' contract as well as go ahead and pay C.D. Lamb and create space upwards about, I think somebody did the homework, uh, my guy, uh, Cowboys Martin, upwards about 24 to $25 million. And this before we came up with the $30 million that was available on the table by the NFL. So I don't think that the Cowboys, all I'm saying is, I don't think that they are equipped enough to rip the Band-Aid off and just go all in for real, for real. Man, that's true. 
it just it's just difficult man it's difficult when when someone is not willing to spend and i think that that's where a part of our problem is is that is that instead of just paying for two or three low grade stuff let's just go in and just pay for one or two high grade stuff instead of paying for multiples of what does it say uh what we say out here quality over quantity but they think mm-hmm. quantity is better than quality and that's that's the backwards way of thinking in my opinion that's all i'm saying man yeah, man but it's it, no i still just i'm just still stuck on that train that that to me that gotta do more like like you you getting paid 55 million dollars like at some point like we got to stop treating football like it's a quarterback's league and every quarterback just got to make his pockets. He got to count his coins off the next quarterback. Because again, like I said, I don't think no quarterback in the league should make more money than than uh, Patrick Patrick Mahomes. But right now, I think Dak Prescott probably grossed more money than than Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady did his whole career. Right now, this year coming up, was it fifty two million dollars? They owe right. Dak. Right, right. So, I, I think so, so right I, now, I, I agree. That, he, I, I agree with your notion that nobody should get paid more than the people that's winning but the problem is is that that's not how the nfl works you know caa uh the the same people that represent pat mahomes also represent to a degree other agencies other i mean other players so they can't sit back and say well i'm only gonna let this dude get the bag and not everyone else what tom Mm -hmm. brady did he went against bylaws he went against code you know, and he was so laser focused in that he didn't care if his lady getting her back blown out by the gardener. You know what I'm saying? Because he was oh, so crazy. focused in. <laughs> I'm just telling you how it is. So he was just so focused in on his career. He didn't give a dog what she was doing. And she was getting folded like a pretzel, allegedly. You know what I'm saying? So it just goes success is subjective. Would you rather have the Super Bowl rings? Or, or, and, and having your lady get her back blown out or would you rather have a lady at the house and you making the money you know what I'm saying at the end of the day Kirk cousin lady ain't getting her back blown out like that and he making more money he may not have the ring but sure at least he come home to a happy home Tom Brady can't that's just the reality of it that's why I say success is subjective it's true <laughs> But that's all I had, Law. You know, I just called in and just talk, talk about that. That's it. No doubt, man. It's, hey, you have a good one. <laughs> you too. Hey, hey, Amir said, hey, 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 that's not fair, Law. Hey, life ain't fair. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey. Hey, Kirk Cousins said, I got a loyal one at me at the house. Hey, allegedly, Tom Brady don't, you know, but he got all of the rings. That's just how it is. So, hey, give, give, me the, give me the loyalty, man, and plus the paper, you know. So sometimes people can be like this right here for tunnel vision and think that, hey, Tom Brady is where you want to be at. But no, he can't walk in his own home. He got a call. Hey, hey, love is uh. I'm sitting on the ring app that the garden is there for an extra 30 minutes. What's going on? You know? And what what Antonio Brown car doing in the driveway? Don't and she telling him, don't worry about that. Allegedly. He he <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? And Antonio Brown still got frequently fire miles over there. Hey, no clone Tyrone, you're live on the nation. Talk to me. What's going on, man? Oh, boy, said trimming the bushes. <laughs> hey, man, I'm feeling good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talk to me, man. Talk to me, hey, man. It, the, the crazy thing about what uh, the last caller just said is not that Prescott, it, you know, it ain't that he can't, you know, it, he can't. Man can't do that shit. Like, the way yeah. that shit set up. I mean, I'm my bag for cussing. No, whatever, no, you good, you good. The way that shit. <laughs> hey, I might have a whole people after me after I said that Tom Brady reference. I probably would never be invited yeah, 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 to the yeah. picnic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but keep going. The way Jerry Jones got his system set up, like he don't he don't know how to go. They like him and his son. They don't know how to go about getting silent. Like, they, like they didn't even call uh Derek Henry. Like they don't pick up the phone and call uh, top, you know, call different players or whatever. Like because because they got their own way. They, it's like 
they know how they they know what they need to do. Right. But the fact that they won't get the credit on how they do it, they will not, you know, do it. You know, it goes like that. Yeah, if I can say that in the clearest way possible. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They they know the what they need to do. Bro. Yeah, yeah. They know what they need yeah, to do. Hey. But if they, they do it the bro, way that hey. if they if they do it that way, then they won't get the credit. Go ahead, go ahead, bro. Mm -hmm. I but to be real, they low key cheat because they 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 want they want players and they expect players to call and like go for like small you no know, contracts type shit like mm -hmm. so it ain't like you know it ain't like Prescott got to say in anything you understand yeah. none of the players got to say in anything so like they outspoke like they outspoken on something things that they see that's going on in the locker room like we had Tony Pollard last year like we yeah. really had no you know thump of a running back that was going to take us all the way through and Jerry knew that Steven knew you know they all knew that and then like the way Dan Quinn like set up the, the you know the defense I know everybody giving Dan Quinn you know it's a, it's a certain part of the uh, Cowboy Nation that feels certain way about with Dan Quinn and a certain part of the Cowboy Nation be like oh, Dan Quinn was good for this team Dan Quinn yeah. ain't had a linebacker. He had safety that linebacker. And, yeah. you know, he didn't put the personnel in. So it's just like, we were screwed from the jump. Like, <laughs> we, won, we, like we went into the season thinking that this, this you know, this little, you know, this team that we had, we just threw together type. And, you know, I don't know. It's like, it, for me, I don't, like, I feel like they don't want to win. I feel like, you know, they just don't they don't want to win like they all they care about is is the brain and the star and all this other stuff and they living they just living the glory day like and prescott is long for the ride until the end of the season i think he made him like end up trading so so so, so here, here's the thing that i'm gonna say again tyrone is that like i said they want to win but they want to win it their way the frank sinatra way and even though we can give them tangible evidence on this is what you need to do in order to win, they're like, no, I like it the way I like it. These raisins in this potato salad, you're going to like it. Just got to try it. And, you know, and even though we telling the people, hey, man, the potato salad is good, but they keep putting these raisins in it. And, and that's the thing. And they got people that that they want to be in the circles with them that would eat this potato salad with the raisins and say, damn, it's good. And, that, and that, that's, that's so they can go to those parties and they can so they go to those events. You see what I'm saying? So that's the problem with the, with the family at all because you don't have the people that can really call them out on their BS and say, hey, yo, <laughs> this... It ain't working. It, it tastes terrible, y'all. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got extra mayo and mustard and all, man. No, <laughs> it don't work, man. And that's the problem. Yeah, I mean, I don't like at this point. I'm just, I don't know. I just hope Prescott. Like, I hope he, I hope his career don't go down the drain because of this, you know, this rat. Like, because Jerry Jones and his his son Steven, like, they just they. I don't know what's going on with their brains or how they operating, but I guess we just got to depend on the drive. You got to depend on the drive, man. That's why we wait. That's why we That's why we are here, man. Appreciate you, dog, for yeah. calling in. No problem, man. You have a good day. No doubt. That's my guy, No Clone Tyrone. So, <clears throat> I got uh, 100 and Noah, Noah on the line here. But y'all hold tight because I want to do this mock draft because I kind of jumped the gun by, by letting my guy in. So y'all hold tight. Y'all stay on the line, though. Y'all stay on the line. Them two right there. But let's roll this mock draft, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You know, And uh, let's go. We're going to go seven rounds. We're going to go get this thing going. Appreciate everybody for jumping in and tuning in. Let me know if y'all ready for it. Get it. 
wait a minute. I, I, I got to go right here. We're going to go turbo settings. We're going to go all. No, not all. Y'all bear with me. Speed, we go fast. Go seven. Boom. All right. Let's see what we got here. Why is this mug going to stop on every draft? Hold on. Y'all bear with me. Why is this setting? We're going to go all the way out and go back in. We're going to go. I don't want no trade settings because, you know, it's going to just make this thing even further out. Pick the Cowboys. We're going to enter the draft. We're going to go fast instead of turbo. That's so we can see things going. If it don't work this time, then we, we'll jump on another simulator. There we go. They tried to get me to trade with the, the, the Chicago Bears. That's, that's not happening, ladies and gentlemen. All right. I like Newton. I like Newton right here, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Stephen Wade, before we go any further, he got a super chat in the house. Appreciate you, man. Stephen Wade says the Cowboys literally needed Dak to make only one play in the 349 ers game. They already build around Dak. And he threw pick six. Purdy didn't throw a pick six. Let me ask you this, though. And I'm glad that you mentioned this, Stephen Wade. I'm not glad you mentioned this. Do you watch all teams or do you only watch the Cowboys for one? And let me know <clears throat> what did Purdy look like without a CMC, without, without a Debo and Trent Williams. Let me know how that looked like. And let me know in the playoff game, did CMC make plays? Did Debo, Brandon Ayuk, did those boys make plays? And where that team came in with a finite reason? I'm just talking about offense. I'm not even jumping on the defensive side. Let me know if those boys made plays. And when we talk about playoffs in general, outside of Dak Prescott in the last three or four playoff games altogether, you can even throw in the, Buc the Broncos, Buccaneers game. Who else on offense made those defining moments or made those plays where you sat there and said to yourself, wow, let me know. And I need to know. I need to know. I need to know. Let's get back to this mock draft. Let me know when Parson, if we can even jump to the defense, who, who made plays on the defense? How many sacks we had in these playoff games? How many interceptions did we have in these playoff games? Last interception we had that we won, absolutely, was in the Buccaneers game. Before that time frame, I believe Anthony Brown made an INT. I don't like Amiris Mims like that, but I do like Cooper DeGene. I think that he will be able to make plays in, dare I say, the playoffs. <laughs> I'm going to pass up on Newton, though. I like Newton, though. Let's get it. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Without hesitation nor deviations, I went with Wilson. Defense win championship. I like, I like Malachi. But I'm looking for my running back now, though. Looking for my running back now. Come on. Ooh, I got my dog Ray Davis and I got my Sean Lloyd. Breland Allen is still available. Isaac is available. I like Dylan Johnson too, by the way. <sighs> this is difficult right now, baby. Come on. Let me see, see if we can go right here. Somebody said Benson. I think he's gone. Trey gone, y'all. 
That's why I'm going to get my running back now. That Ray Davis looking too good for me right now. They're going to they gonna fail me. I'm with Breland Allen probably a bit too soon. Let's get it. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. I like Isaac. Cooper DeJean, Peyton Wilson, and they gave me a D minus for Breland Allen. And that's okay. I'll live with that. I got my dog that's been waiting on the horn, man, from the 201. You're live on the nation, brought to you by Prize Picks. You in the mix. Talk to me, dog. What's good with you? Hey, man. Hey, man. I, I just want to open it up by saying, I'll bounce those Yankees, baby. Ah! Bye, baby. Ah! Let's go. Let's go, little fan. I'll bounce those Yankees, baby. Let's go. 5 and 0, oh, baby. We rolling, baby. Let's go. Bump them Yankees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, man. <laughs> you just wait. Listen, Law. Listen, Law. Listen, Law. We beat our arch rivals this weekend, Law. We swept them Houston boys. You know what I'm saying? Oh they my don't God! Want you, no smoke. You know what I'm you, saying? You, you stand a lot of we. You stand a lot of we we over there. That, that's you, your your team, your team. You know what I'm saying? I'm in the South over here. You know what I mean? I don't, look, 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 you got that East Coast biasness going on right now. <laughs> Talking about we 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 we. Hey, listen, yeah. listen, long, 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 long. I am by New York, man. I'm a Yankees fan. Listen, oh, long, I, I didn't go. know. And what's your basketball on, team man. again? No, no, no. I don't do all New look, look, the only New York team I root for is the Yankees. The Yankees. I'm a Heat fan. You the Heat, I'm you're a the Heat, Heat fan. Yeah. And and you know already know it's America's team. Yeah, it's America's the team. The only New York team I root for is the Yankees. Okay. Do you still like Le- do you like LeBron James? Do you like him? Since he got you some rings that uh Heat. Yes. Of course, okay. man. He, come yeah. on, man. It's Wade County first. <laughs> Come on now. Okay. Wade County. Wade, Wade County. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? And, and then when Braun came in and he did his thing, you know, let's not forget about Shaq. Can't forget about the Shaq, you know. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Come on, man. And Haslam, you know, Haslam, you know, he, he, he the go-to, man. Haslam, man. <laughs> well, what you got for the show, man? What you got for me today, man? What, what's going on, man? Listen. The Yankees. And the Cowboys was in the same direction last year. Okay. Okay. We both had, well, well, the Yankees was even worse because we didn't even make the playoffs, and that's a dip. lawless. Yeah, it's a whole another conversation. Buried the team because listen, Law, we don't do that. We have a standard when mm-hmm. it comes to the Yankees. A standard. Why do you think we? Got come on, we got a standard. Yeah, it's it's World Series or the season is a failure. And if you don't, and here's the thing, we didn't even make the playoffs last year. So you could have. That was the bottom of the bottom of the bottom. And you know what they did? What they do? They got Otani. They got Otani. Otani killing shit right now. They went out and made moves and got players. They don't got a Jerry over there, man. That's what it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? <laughs> the heat is the same is what I'm saying. You know, all New York media don't play no games. But the difference between the, the New York media and the Cowboys media is the New York media is not afraid to say, y'all not doing y'all job and we not taking it. I agree. The I agree. The fans is not playing around. That's, that's I agree. how our fans <laughs> go up and say, listen. This is unacceptable. Man. And I mean all of Yankees fans is in unit. This is un this is not acceptable. Cowboys Nation fans ain't like that. And some they said they got like no it. cap. Some look look my guy Italian. Like a- Italian Cowboys said there's no cap in baseball though, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I understand. You ain't comparing apples and apples, man. But you do got some baseball teams that don't like to spend no money, too, even though ain't no cap. I understand that. But the thing is, Yankees Nation fans are in unison. We not taking this shit. We ain't make the playoffs. It's a problem. Y'all need to fix that shit. Mm -hmm. And they went out and fixed it. Cowboys Nation fans is not in unison like Yankee fans. 
down. Everybody is not saying we not accepting this. We need to make the team better, and we need to win some games. Ain't a long, long, long. Who long. who, who will win the championship saying, first, listen, though? Listen, will listen, the listen, Yankees listen, win listen, one listen, first before the Cowboys? Now, will the Yankees win one course, before the Cowboys? Of course, huh? Huh? of course, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> How much you want to put on? Come on, Hey, no, 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 we can do that. We yeah. can do that. But long. Yankee fans ain't say trade Aaron Judge because we wasn't winning. Like they're doing Dak Prescott with the Cowboy fans. Yeah. They said, yeah. Aaron Judge, you a great player. Mm -hmm. Not only are we going to pay you, we going to get Otani. We going to get these guys and build around you, Aaron Judge, to get the job done. Hey man, let me see Rangers in the chat, man. You know you ain't finna mess me up over here in Dallas, man. I just got me some put, uh, I got me some passes for the Rangers game. So hey, y'all put Rangers in the chat, man. I, hey, hey I may be from Mississippi, but I'm gonna y'all put Rangers in Rangers in the chat. But there ain't no fluke. No, we lifted up that trophy last season. No. That's a fluke, bro. That was a fluke. You know what I'm saying? Hey. We got 20, we, we, listen, we almost got 30 of them things. We coming, dog. We got y Y'all coming for us. All right, so let, let's do this, man. Let, let, let's put down right now who will go further, the Rangers or the Yankees right now. What you want to do, 50? Five and uh, no. You want to do 50 or $100? Which one you want to do? We can do $100. Bro. Uh, we can do, no, we'll, we'll put one, no, one hundo. One hundo, one hundo Rangers making it further than the Yankees, man. That's all that matters, man. And I want, I want it, I want, I want it in 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 cash coins. <laughs> yes, indeed, man. I'm I'm gonna hold it down for Texas, man, all the way, man. I'm rooting for every team but the uh, the Houston teams because. Uh, East side be talking too much noise, man. Come on with it. <laughs> but I mean, it, but I mean, we do good in the draft, man. Uh -huh. And you know, I'm not the draft. It is what it is. But you're not gonna win unless you build around people. Right. You're not gonna do that. And the Joneses know that. And they want to be the opposite. Okay, the league, go out and get players. We want to win the Super Bowl and without going out and building around the team. But what that causes is everybody to just blame it on the quarterback. The quarterback got to do more. The quarterback only got to do more for the Cowboys. But yeah. every other team, the quarterback gets helped and they get praised like they the greatest. Right. right. And, 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 and that's just crazy to me. That's crazy to me how the four, Shady and all these guys, man, Dak Prescott sucks. Dak Prescott sucks. Nah, he don't. But he if don't. the Eagles wasn't building around Jalen Hurts, oh. he would be on that show. Come on, Eagles. You got to help Jalen Hurts. You got to build around Jalen Hurts. And everybody in unison would be saying the same thing. Come on, man. You got to build around the quarterback. But when it comes to the Cowboys, they don't make that argument for the quarterback. They yeah. don't do that like they would do for every other quarterback. They, they don't. don't. The Cowboys are the <laughs> only team in the in the in the world in the world that that literally don't do that for their particular team, and it's it's crazy, bro, uh, that we can see with our natural eyes what the Cowboys. It, it's just the little things. I'm not asking for the sun and the moon. All I'm asking for is can we find a way to adopt a run game. Can we figure out a way to stop the run? You give me those two, and and regardless, even if it's Dak Prescott or not, we're going to make it farther than what we've been doing if you set upon the principles. Now, granted, with Dak Prescott, you would do even a better job because of his ability to win games when you have those things and present it upon him. 
otherwise, man, I get what people say because you, you told me don't say this with Patrick Mahomes. But at the end of the day, it's still Pat Mahomes going to be that gold standard because that's just how the NFL works, bro. That's how it goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how the NFL works. But if you look in, and that's the problem I feel like with the fans. They don't look into the games. They just listen to the four-letter networks, and that's why they come up with the narrative that Prescott can't get it done. But when you look into the games and you see how these teams play and how these teams roll, and you see, man, these teams are yeah. doing more for their quarterback than the Cowboys are doing. That's like, come on, man. That's like you not doing nothing for your wife, and you mad that your wife ain't giving you nothing. Ooh, hey, let, me, let me say this. Else, let, 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 me, let me let you let me let you answer this one. My guy Queso, he said, "Stop the cap, Law, Olin, Lamb, Cooper, Gallup, Schultz, Zeke. They didn't put things around Dak Prescott. All right, so I'm gonna let you go first and break that down because even when we had Amari Cooper for the 2021 season, I get 2020. We he got hurt." But when we start when we start talking about building and I'm talking about emotions, what was the very much so thing that they did the following year after 2021? They broke that down. Yes. Debo, Debo is not with the 49ers for one year. CMC is not with the 49ers for one year. They're not finna sell off everything because they lost. They're gonna continue to add to. But I want you to break that down. They broke it down. The CD Lamb is not the CD Lamb that we see today. Right. He was still learning. He was still developing. And another thing, you named one outside free agent. All the rest of those people are draft picks. That's not building. Get them. When I say build, I mean you go out and you get other great players and build around your draft right. picks. The Cowboys don't build around their draft picks. They don't they do get that. draft picks. The Cowboys, they even get a draft pick to replace a draft pick. <laughs> he ain't lying. Yeah. They, they get a draft pick to replace a draft pick. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So that's You're not right. building, people. That's not building. Shoot. Take if. that cowboy. And everybody say that argument. And everybody say, oh, man, they built around Dak. They built around Dak. You do your research, and that's what you come up with. And then you pull up the 49ers. And then you get back to me. You know what? You know do what you else? Pull- you know what else? I got to put this in, too, fam. Mm-hmm. Is that even when you look at, let, let's say, for example, Parsons. What were he talking about last year in the draft? He was getting saying that boy. we're getting a big boy, right? Mm-hmm. Their ideology of building to help Parsons out is an effing rookie. You know? Thank you. <laughs> like, Come on. all they had oh, to do rookie. is pick up the phone, use some of those resources, and do like what the Niners did. They didn't say, okay, Javon Kinlaw, it's your time to shine, baby. They went and pulled the trigger and got a Javon Hargraves. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. And and, and not only that, they paid a quarter of a billion dollars with a B to a guy named Bosa, you know. On top of that, did they stop there? No, they didn't stop there. Nope. They already had a guy named Cleveland uh, that who was a former first round draft pick on one end, and they said to themselves, they are not finna lean on Drake Jackson. Drake Jackson was an early pick for them, equivalent to if he was on the Cowboys, he would be starting for the Cowboys. But they said that wasn't enough there. They went and got a Chase Young. They went and got smoke weed every day, mm-hmm. uh, Randy Gregory. Mm-hmm. Why mm-hmm. did they do those things? Mm-hmm. I thought that they had mm-hmm. enough weapons, weapons with Fred mm-hmm. Warner. I thought they had enough weapons with Dre Greenlaw. I thought they had mm-hmm. enough weapons. See, what the Cowboys tend to do, they would hear all of this and say, we got enough weapons. We don't need more and more weapons. We like our guy. We like our guy. So that's the difference between saying that, okay, we're going to try to go all for the chip. They tried to go all for the chip. Now, although they came up short. (laughs) They still went for it. But we got guys in the chat talking. But we got guys in the chat talking about Brock Purdy's better than Dak Prescott. If you people don't go sit down and shut the F up, man. 
Seriously. And, 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 and here's two me, different leagues. Let, let me let me say this one more time, because because I'm gonna say this while you here before I let the next call on. My guy Chris Blunt says Dak had Cooper, Gallup, Dez, Witten, Cooks, Schultz, Zeke, Martin, Travis, Frederick. Now, okay. hear me out. What did Dez do since he's been gone from the Cowboys? What did Jason no. Witten do? Dude, he, he dude grew it back and lost it again, and they brought him back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You talking about you talking about a Jason Witten that's past his career talking about how he was a weapon. You kidding me? This is what I'm talking about. A Jason Witten past his career. A Dan Bryant past his career talking about those are weapons. You hey, kidding me? See, and if you want to talk about the first year, if you want to talk about the first year with that team, we had a great team in 2016. Did the Cowboys say, "I right, trade de- trade trade deadline"? Let's go pick up. Let's go get guys to win it. No, we like our guys. We we like our guys. So you so kidding me? Here's here's the thing: they just this, don't man. know how to build a palm with this. what they got. All I'm saying no. is, even with Zeke, I like Zeke, but in those playoff games, <laughs> since two, since twenty, he was here 2021 and 2022. Can somebody put his average yards per rush in those games? And the people saying we had Zeke, and I love Zeke. Yeah, Zeke, my God, they finna bring him back. But can somebody put his right. average yards? Right. And was team in fear of Ezekiel Elliott running? I'll uh, I'll wait. I'll wait. You got they about to bring him back, <laughs> and you got some people in Cowboy Nation. I ain't gonna name their names, love, because you know it's your show, and I don't want you. I don't want to hurt none of the bridges you have. That's gonna throw a party about Zeke coming back. You kidding me? Yeah, yeah. Come on, man, you gotta stop this. But the same people going to sit there and say this year, man, they built around Dak, man. They brought Zeke back and Dak wasn't able to do nothing. The top, I'm the, telling the, you that. The, the, thing, the thing is with Zeke, last year, of course, I think that if he averaged 2.5 yards, uh, my guy Brown, Brown said he averaged 2.5 yards, that would have been good for us when we got into the red zone, money zone, green zone, because he would have got you three yards. He would have leaned forward and got you those three yards, even if he averaged 2.5. He got a nose for the end zone, and that's why I think that he would have been more valuable. On top of that, the Cowboys decided to get rid of their hammer and only use the nail. The nail can't drive without the hammer. You needed some push. If you think I'm lying, look at what the Eagles did. You know, that doggone uh, quarterback sneak play then counted for a lot of touchdowns. Why? Because they had to push. Yes, and the Cowboys wouldn't have, and the Cowboys, come on, they wouldn't have got Zeke anyway because they was paying Tony Pollard money. So they're going to make sure that they get their money's worth. They wasn't going to get no Zeke and, and no, no. Yeah, that, no. That, yeah, And then yeah. Rico wouldn't have got no touches. We wouldn't have been able to see Rico. It would have been Zeke and Pollard again. Slow Zeke. Come on, man. The Cowboys have problems. They want to do things their way, and they want the money to play. And and, and if you're making too much, then they don't want you to play. That's no the doubt. problem, man. And the fans need to see that, man. And stop blaming it on the quarterback, and it's not the quarterback. It's not them. No doubt, man. Nah. I appreciate you for calling in, Chief, man. You you one of the good ones, uh, man. Hey, hey, but get your hand off the panic button, though, bro. <laughs> get your <laughs> hand off the that panic button. My, nah. hand, I, my <laughs> hand off the panic button. My <laughs> hand off the panic button, man. It's off. It's not on it no more. And let, me no let me hear you I'm say, let me hear you say, go Rangers, man. Go Rangers, man. Let me hear you say, come on, let me hear you say, go Rangers. Come on, man. I can't, I can't do that. I can't do that. For me. You won't do this for me. You won't do this for me. Come on, man. Hey, Law. Oh, you trying to have me playing basketball in Pelican Bay, dog? That's Shoot program. Me do. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me say go Cowboys, then. You know. <laughs> How about some Cowboys and them Yankees? Oh, Let's go, my gosh, man. Ah, man, you know. Shake, uh, shake, shake one hundred grand with the butter knife, y'all. <laughs> Put some butter knives in the chat, man. What about? He said that on my airways again. Shame. 
Shame. <laughs> Shame. I'm trying my best, y'all. Since I've been in Dallas, man, I'm, I'm I'm trying to like the Dallas Mavs. I'm trying to. I'm trying to, y'all. I'm trying to. But my heart ain't there. I converted a little bit to the Rangers, a little bit, you know. I'm always going to be 10 toes down on my Cowboys. That's just how that goes. But, you know, <laughs> put them butter knives in the chat, man. The dude said, go Yankees, man. Ah. Ah. But before we go further, man, uh, let's check out Prize Picks, man. They, you in the mix with Prize Picks? I got a four pay play out for three racks, man. Hopefully this can hit. Uh, we got um, Jesus. I think I'm going with less on this one, my dog. I'm going with less on this one. Action, got to follow him. Follow me now. I don't think he's gonna have seven strikeouts, man. Logan Webb. I went with less with him. I don't think he's going to have six strikeouts. This is my philosophy right here. Zach, I went with less again. I'm going with less crew, man. I don't think he's going to have six. And then I got Alex. I don't think that he's going to have uh, five. So I went with more or less. And I'm going to share this uh, pick with you guys. Oh, y'all saying go Yankees in the chat. Ah, Check out prize picks, man. You can be in the mix. And... Hopefully, man, y'all can hit on your picks. I got for 200, Tyler with less. I got Barrows uh, with more. And I got Andrew uh, with less here for a, a, a thousand. You know, let's see if we can hit that. You guys can do the same on prize picks. All you got to do is download prize pick, use promo code LAW, and they will match up to $100 on your first deposit so that could be the situation i see some gold braves fans in the chat i see y'all man i see y'all where the dodgers at man who where the dodger fans at okay i see you christopher jay in the house i'm gonna lean on y'all on some of these baseball situations man i definitely will i'm gonna lean on y'all some of these baseball uh mlb stuff yeah i'm gonna lean on y'all man you know i don't got time to watch all of the baseball stuffs and stuff like that but they got it all here you can go with more or less all you got to do is just uh when you download prize picks you can look at their own site or insight analysis too for example for this one right here you just click these little three bars right here and it will show you the exact numbers that they had in the last four or five games and basically, this is the total basis that he had. So they got a point five down at him. You would go with more with this, you know. And then uh, as well as with Bobby Witt. Shoot, got nine right here scores. Mm, that, that where I go with more right there. So you can also do the same with prize picks with the help of their analysis. And they do have promos as well, $25 on them. All right, the next caller with the plan, I got the 626, you in the mix. Brought to you by Prize Picks. Talk to me, man. Hello, man, hello. Thank you for taking my call. Yeah, hey, man, thank you. Thank you for jumping in, bro. But, uh, I, just, I just want to address this, uh, this draft. We, got, okay. we have too many holes, in my opinion, to fill this year. So it's going to be like a two-year type of deal since we don't go out in free agency and, and get no players. So... I would like, I saw what you did with the drafts right there. I, right. I would like to go tackle, and then maybe you could slide the guard this year. And then tackle. I want to go spinner, running back, because I want to fix this run game. I can't, I can't take another season without being able to run the ball, though. I can't, I can't watch this. We got to be able to run the ball. Yeah, yeah know, we do. I know the defense is struggling. We need a big man down there. We need some linebackers, but we should address that in free agency. We need, we need to get this run game going. But that's all I got. That's all I got. So, so, so defense and free agent, well, defense going to have to be on the back end, right? And on the front end, what we what we need to happen over here in Cowboys is two 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 things. You remember Zeke rookie year? We need something like that yeah. to happen with with a running back, or we need that year that you remember this guy named Julius Jones. Yeah. Yeah. We need yeah. that. Now, hopefully, you know, the running back, whoever we get, stay healthy because Julius Jones got injured. But we need that type of impact with our rookie running back. <laughs> yeah, whoever I mean, it may I, be. I, I think that this run game going to help Dak out because everybody's screaming for Dak. Dak is not good. Or the, 
Dak is a good quarterback. He just needs, like you say, he needs pieces around him. He's got pieces, and sometimes he lets us down. That, that's just part of the game. But we got to get a run game for him. You know, we can't, we can't, we can't have him out there throwing thirty plus passes because then we're really going to be looking at him like, yeah, this is not the formula. This is not the formula, so, bro. You, you're right. So, so Dak need what? I watch. I'm gonna get some people mad at me. Dak going to need what Roger Staubach and as well as what Troy Aikman needed. Run game. Yeah. Appreciate you, man. Thanks for calling in, bro. Thank you. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> Somebody mad at me. Somebody like, hello. I'm fighting, man. I'm fighting, man. Troy Aikman didn't need no Emmy. And Roger Starbuck, man, he didn't need Tony Dorset and Neil, man. He didn't need those boys. They could have won it by themselves. <laughs> Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Somebody going to argue and say, yeah, but Dak had Zeke. Yes, but he had Jason Garrett too. Man, come on. It don't make it. I can't make this stuff up, man. <laughs> he had Jason Garrett too. I just, I would love, I would love to see. I would love to see a, a competent front office coaching staff as well as, you know, with the run game situation. We got to stop the run first. Italian Cowboy says, says it right. Yeah. Uh, from the 254, you're live. On the nation brought to you by Prize Picks. You're live. Hey, Law Nation. What's good? Is this John? Yes, it is. What's good, John? Talk to me. Uh, I about Zeke is. I, 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 I about Zeke, oh yeah. About Zeke, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, if it if it is true, wait, if it is true, uh, uh, is they it bringing that Zeke? They got to have to pay, uh, pay him, to pay him, to pay him, to pay him, what he was getting paid before he left, or or get a different pay. Okay, uh, I I got your uh, answer there to what you're asking for. All right, so by the NFL, he's going to get paid six and a half million dollars regardless because that's the dead money that the Cowboys owed on his last contract. <clears throat> but for his new contract, he's going to have to negotiate a brand new contract because the contract that he have now is null and void. He don't have a contract with the Cowboys. So yeah. according to league rules... He's going to have to get paid something. You can't say, okay, let's just give him what he's already going to get paid anyhow. So the Cowboys got to draw up a new contract for Ezekiel Elliott. Now, you can probably look Zeke in his face and say, hey, you know, we strapped for cash right now because we got to pay X, Y, and Z people. Is there a way that you yeah. can come in under vet minimum? Or then that could be lines of disrespect, you know. Because he's going to look at it like, hey, you know, my market value, I believe in myself, and I deserve at least two to three million again. And that's going to be up to his representatives. It's going to be up to Zeke team, et cetera, on whether or not he get paid the vet minimum or he get paid two to three million dollars. Yeah. <clears throat> I think he will get paid about at least... They're not gonna disrespect him like that, so they're gonna at least give him two or three million dollars. I, I, I saw it all over the Facebook and the news, but I, 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 I don't think I, I they. Says, I don't. I, I don't think. I, I, I don't. I, I don't think they will be 
pain. The pain left money because the contract was wasn't wasn't with the Dallas Cowboys. Hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You you saw that? Yeah, I, I, I've heard of that. Yeah, they, they, they probably do that. But, you know, as far as that happening, we don't know, uh, John. But, John, man, uh, when, when you supposed to move down this way? What, um, what week? What, what month? This coming, this coming, this month. This month? In April. In April? All right, let me know. Let me know of the date. Just, just shoot me a text message, man, and uh, let me know of the date so I can get uh, some things aligned so we can see you uh, move and everything and help you out. I appreciate you, John. I thank you so much. Let me hear you say it, too, on your way out. All right. Go down top of D, DC4L. Yes, indeed, DC4L. We undefeated when John go to the football games. So... We needed John in that Green Bay game. We needed John. If John was there, baby, we would have won. We would have beat Green Bay. So, hey, we're going to make it our business, man. Make sure that John go to every game, every home game there for sure. Get John there, man. Shoot, we would have beat, beat Green Bay. Come on, baby. <laughs> Somebody says, T-Jack says, vet minimum plus incentives. That will work. That will work. Um, <clears throat> That would work. I got uh, the person that's waiting here, but I think I had a super chat, and I want to make sure I get to it before it goes away. Uh, let me see, because uh, I didn't get a chance. Dang, it went away. Let me get to that super chat, and I'll let you in from the 206. Just bear with me. I want to make sure we get to all our super chats here. Get bear with me, Hail Mary. And uh, while I'm looking this up, be sure to check out Prize Picks, man. Uh, they've been taking real good care of us all together. Be sure to check out Prize Picks, and you can be in the mix as well by downloading Prize Picks using promo code LAW. Even with Prize Picks, they do have specialized offers, whereas they got promotional material that could put $25 on you from them, you know. And all you have to do is download Prize Picks. While I'm looking that up, bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. Boom, there we go. There we go. Let me pull up this uh, super chat. Appreciate y'all, man, so much for your patience. We got a super chat from Stephen Wade. Stephen Wade. Is that Deadpool? Is that dead? Is that Deadpool name? Let me know. He says for the 499 in the 49ers game, they legit kept the Niners under 20. Their last game was 12 and 19 with Dak throwing multiple picks. That I I will agree, I will agree, I will agree. Who else showed up in that game? Who else showed up in that game? Because when we talk about they held the Cowboys defense held the Niners to 19 points, how was they able to get that first down when the defense pretty much had Navarre Gallimore covering Kittles? Let me know in the chat. Did they score a touchdown on, off of that series there? Y'all let me know. I want to know. Did they score a touchdown on for that series there? Because we can look at it from both ways. We can look at it from both ways. I've, I'm old enough to remember. I'm old enough to remember that the Chiefs had five fumbles. Five fumbles in a pick. They jumped on all they jumped on all but one of their fumbles. So they only lost one. And even the INT, they held the 49ers to zero points. So I need to know, man, if 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 we if we gonna go matchup for matchup. And it's well documented. It's well documented on one of the picks that Dak Prescott threw towards. We're going all the way back in 2022. Gallup's way. That Gallup cheated and stopped himself and stopped his feet on the route. Now, should Dak Prescott attempt to throw the ball to Gallup on that route? We can argue and say, hell no. 
but that's an equal shared responsibility. Gallup shouldn't have stopped his feet on that route. Should have fought through it. But that's a whole nother conversation. Well, we can put it on the quarterback, though. We put that on the quarterback, though. All right, let's go to do 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 do. My God, from the two o six, MJ, you live, man. What's good with you? What's up, family? All is well. Can't complain. Hey, I, hey, did you hear about that supposed to be offer? What off from New England? If it came out yesterday, it was April Fools. <laughs> Yeah, I know. But it's April Fool's. Huh? He wasn't, this guy wasn't, he used to play with Michael Irvin and he on a TV show. But uh, he said it's a maybe or it might. But the offer was they get that. We get the third, the second. We get the third pick of the draft. And we, and, they, and we get the second, third, and fifth for Dak Prescott, New England. I'll take that deal. I'll take that deal all day. I would take that. Woo. So you saying that there was a a mock trade situation, right? It, no, it's supposed to be real. No, oh, man, if it came what? out yesterday, it was, it was April Fool's. No, no, but I'm saying it wasn't April Fool. The guy was on the talk, talk show. And then the one guy that'd be, uh, that'd be on... Uh, a Mark show, the white guy, he's kind of good. But he's like, it's a maybe. But the office there is up to that representative. Because that way they're going to they gonna pay the money to him, what he wants. And then Dallas get to get them picks. I'm taking that draft all day, bro. We can't be scared. As Cowboys, you got to move. If, 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 if they give me that, if New England will, they give me that. Second round and a third round and a fifth round and they first pick them, man. You know how many teams gonna jump? That's more drafts, man. We could we could fill our whole roster, but woo, we could be. Oh my god, I, I wish that happened for real. If yeah. New England is that foolish to give and they want that, man, I'm giving that up. I'm yeah. giving that up. Long. Sorry, man. Bye bye, Dak. That means my first pick in the draft. It's got that left tackle from Notre Dame, the best left tackle. And then I get the, then you know that at the, at the 25th, 24th spot, somebody going to want to trade. We can trade down to 31 and get two. Oh, my God. That's second. And th- we'll be eating like, we'll be eating barbecue all day. We'll get all our deep tackles, all our linebackers, another guard and receivers. Man, we'll be deep. I hope everybody play, pray. I know Brandon here. <laughs> I'm taking that loss. Sorry. Bye, Dak. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 Now, now, now there's I, – I give it what you said, but I, I, I don't think that that's going to happen because it takes two to dance and two to, two to tangle. Yeah, but that's Dak. Why, why would that's Dak say yesterday? Why would he say yesterday? Because he's about to get 60 mil. He want that money, 60 mil, 65 mil. So, hey, if New England willing to pay you that 60, 65 million, we could take the stress off of us. And then all the Dak people, that's not for the Cowboys. Y'all going to go for Dak. And then, because, you know, we always going to lose players. Because my favorite player, Tony Dorsett, Emmett Lev, is going we got to keep moving. Can't wait. This, the train never stopped long. So, I'm going to go on and trade him. And, and he get that sixty, sixty-five. And, and what, what if he say no? What if he say no? I and like playing with CD. Gonna be mad as hell. What I'm if he say? Right n- what if he say no? I like playing with CD. I like living in Dallas. I I like well, warm was, weather. Okay. I like that a dome. Mean, okay, I like that. So that means he gonna have to give up that. Uh, he gonna have to sign for fifty-one, fifty-two, fifty-three mil. He he he. What if what if I told you if they were were to approach him last year, he would have said yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's last year. We can't worry about. It. We can't go back. They never approached him. They never approached him. They approaching him now. So you can't. 
You no, can't put the no, toupees no, back no, in the tube. On. Okay, let me get you on this song since you said that. Don't you know uh -huh. the Cowboys, y'all didn't even know this because y'all thought, because all the, like the people on these talk shows, you be on the one that be, be keeping it real, but a lot of the talk shows just be running their mouth and don't be knowing, but you don't you know that they had offered him a contract for 35 mil before, and he bet it on himself. And that's how he got the 45 mil. The little cobbles that are off on the table was 35 mil a year. When y'all say it was 28, they gave him a 35 million dollar contract a year. And he said no, and he bet it on himself. He didn't take it. So. Don't say they don't be offered. The, don't those be those, those be reports have conflicting uh, points there because you got to understand who broke that news. That was Mike Fisher. No no, no shade at Fisher and but more. And, 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 well, well, Fisher, uh, hey, I, I'm not finna call him out on a few things. But well, somebody asked Mike Fisher what's the cover for. Y'all asked Mike Fisher what cover for is. You know, but neither here nor there. I'm going to say this, though. Here's what uh -huh. I'm going to say. Those were conflicting reports because... Here's one thing I do know for sure. Okay. The Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott team, he literally said that he don't negotiate once the season kicked off. He don't communicate with his people once the season kicked off because he's focused only on okay. the task at hand. So I what alleged like what, what allegedly like happened, that. what allegedly like happened, that. that they said that they got a deal that they said that they got a deal on the table. I think it was Mike Florio or someone else, I believe. Yeah. But he need to hear no there. They said that they had a deal that was on the table. And then after week three, week four, they wanted to rip that deal up because it was the hand signature deal that they was going to go with that deal. And they ripped that contract up because after uh, the first two or three weeks of the season, that the price of that bag went up because of his performance midway for the first two or three weeks of the season. Well, yeah, I would tell you guys this. I would tell you guys this. If you believe that, then you believe also that they almost worked out a deal with Brandon Cooks, but the contract and the season <laughs> franchise, all of this stuff that they talked about, the trade deadline went up and the, the deadline make deals and all of this stuff. And they couldn't get the agreement done. They said that before with multitudes of other players. So I don't yeah. believe a thing what the Jones says when he's talking about, hey, man, we did offer this, but this happened. If we did offer that and that happened, no way, no how. But it didn't happen. I understand, you know? that. <laughs> I, I understand that, but the moral of the story, I just don't like it. Like I told you, Law, if me and you have to play somebody on the team, I'm going to stick with you. I don't be crying. If we lose, we lose. I'm going to fight with you. And uh, I just get tired every day. I'm tired of hearing about that press conference. Can y'all say something else about something, you know, to make the people happy? It's, it, man, it's, it's, it's a slow it. season, That's man. It's always going to be Dak oh, Prescott. That, it's always going to be conversation that. with that. Come on, man. Please stop <laughs> doing that. I want to know about what we're going to do because after 29, that's when y'all going to start getting the players y'all want. Because they don't want to give up some cup. After the drought, the Cowboys going to start filling their roster with everything. So, and then it's a, it's a battle in camp. We're going to get half back. I like Zeke. Zeke, he's going to be okay. But, you know, because like y'all said, now look at this. Y'all said, oh, man, oh, wait, this is crazy. Y'all was crying when we let Zeke go. Everybody on here, oh, oh. Now we bring Zeke back. Now y'all call him old. He's younger than fucking, excuse my French, he's younger than uh, the halfback y'all wanted that went to Tennessee. Zeke is 29, he's 30. We're better than We're better Riggs. I feel you, man. MJ, I thank you for calling in, man. But oh, we can right. clear. So, so wait a minute. Before I let you go, are you implying, yeah. are you implying that Zeke is running at the equivalent rate of what Derrick Henry been doing in the last two seasons? Are you implying that? Uh, no. Because of that. Let me tell you this, Law. When the young man still can run, he's going to be around some dogs in front of him now. 
New England don't have no passing game, bro. So I can stack my – y'all don't be thinking of that. Now, if you stack the box against the Cowboys, like you said, Lord, I'm going by what you said. You know Zeke going to get you two or three. That's all you need. We get that first. Now, they coming up now with the new halfback. Either the, we going to either have the Florida State halfback or the uh, the Miami – I mean, uh, the Tennessee halfback or the Texas halfback. With them dangerous brothers, and you stack that box now, that means Ezekiel – I mean, uh, our receiver is going to eat. So, I just don't want anybody coming on. Y'all keep making excuses. Stop making excuses coming on this chat, bro. Just let's see what's going to happen. And if we lose, we lose. If we don't, we don't. So far, everything's going good for us. So let's see what happens. Let's wait to see what happens. I'm going to see you at the camp, and we're going to see what happens. You see what I'm saying, bro? So Appreciate stop you, man. Appreciate God. you, bro. Oh. Thank you, bro. <laughs> Thank you for calling in, man. Uh, <laughs> shit. Let me ask y'all this. And this is what I've been doing. And let me read this super chat before it gets too too far of my thought track. Troops or tropes, Titan or Titan. It wasn't Fisher. Jones are ready to bench Dak Prescott. Ooh, sir. I mean, I appreciate you, man, for, for, for the 199 to help support the nation, man. I appreciate you, bro. We need it. We need every coin over here to help grow. <laughs> and I appreciate you. Just, just, just give me the evidence and then I'll, I, I, I'll figure out a way to highlight that and, and make it go viral. We got breaking news. The Cowboys are ready to bench. Dak Prescott I feel you but before I let the 662 in I just want to say this right quick ladies and gentlemen if the weather if the weatherman said it's a 96% chance of raining and you yourself saying that well it's a 4% chance that it's not going to rain so I don't get the poncho. I don't get the umbrella. And then you go out there <clears throat> with none of that. And you get wet all up. And your first strike would be stop making excuses. When the weatherman literally said it's a 96% chance of rain. And you go out there and you get all wet up. And you explain it, and everybody explaining to him that why is he saying that he's wet up? Stop making excuses. That is equivalent to what we are saying with this particular team. That there's a 90 to 95% chance that if you don't do this and if you don't do that, that it's going to rain on your head. And then you go out there. And then we explain the raindrops that's falling on your head. The opposing person saying, hey, stop making the excuses. Instead of pointing out the fact that this person, Law Nation, said that there's a 90 to 95 percent chance that it's going to rain. And then y'all want to get mad at me for telling you that it's a 90 to 95 percent chance or that it's going to rain. It's a 90 to 95 percent chance that you're going to lose the game because you don't have run game. You don't have the ability to stop the run. On top of that, we are the most focalized fan base in the world. On top of that, we are the most focal point of a team in the world. 
meaning that everybody, mama, uncle, cousin, Tupac, and Biggie is going to point out whether you good or bad, your players. But you sent you tend to send your players out there, regardless with the ponchos, with the rain jacket, or the raincoat, or the umbrella, on the five percent chance that you do win. And now you pointing back at me and saying, "Hey, Law, we were able to win twelve games with the five percent chance of it going against us." So we okay. We got talent. We got the ability. That weather man is wrong. It didn't rain. Tricks. I'm going to need some Henny after this call. I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring Zeke back. Just above vet minimum. We could use those eight or nine touches in reliable shorts yarded production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the short yard production, I think that he still got that in his bag. I think that ultimately, when we got down to the one in Miami, that that wouldn't have been a fumble there with Zeke. Zeke would have leaned forward that cantankerous head, and he would have got a first down. You even got with the head of Zeke, pause. <laughs> he would have hit. He would have scored. That cantankerous of a hit. 662, you live on the nation, brought to you by prize picks. Man, thank you. Thanks a lot for having me on. And Appreciate like, you. What I want to say is, man, about the Cowboys, man, like, you know, I have been like the Cowboys since I was a little boy, man. Like, it just been a lot of disappointment, but, like, everybody's speaking upon that person out of t- contract and what he works and, and, and things of that nature. Like I say, man, it's just, it's just my personal opinion. Man, like, they got to let that go. You know, you just let them walk this free agent, take the cap here because it's on the simple script. Like, man, we got younger players. You got you got to focus on Michael Parks. You got to focus on C.D. Lamb. Them folks don't want their bad. And they're worse than their performance. And, and, and like you were saying, you know, like, hey, we're going 12 and 5, 12 and 5. Like, he didn't reach his potential. That's the farther he could take us. We're not going to go no farther. We're going to go 12 and 5. We're going to go home in the first round of the playoffs because that's how far he's going to take us. Now, that's not – all of it don't fall on that. It don't fall on that. The defense plays a big part in that. And what you stated, it's been an issue for the last three, four years. Why won't you really invest in a real defensive tackle to show up the run? All these defensive tackles was free agents and things like that, not just this year. We can talk about last year and the my, previous years before that. My brother, my brother from Mississippi. You from Mississippi, right? I see the 662 in the house, yeah. right? You from Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so you know, you, you you way up there in the Delta area, right? Like Leland and them, oh, you know. Yes, you up north yeah, over there. Clyde there. <laughs> well, you, well, Clyde there? Okay. You, all right, so you remember the analogy I gave the young fella about the car, right? Uh-huh. Would you rather, you know, drive to work or walk to work, right? And he said, sure, I would I'll rather drive. Here's the other side of that analogy. You still got to make two more years of payment on that car. It's $55 yeah. million dollars now and it's $40 million next season. I get yeah, it. They're, they're, so, they're, so are you up. saying, hold on, are you saying that you want to let Dak Prescott go now or next season? I need to know where you, your process is at. I feel like it's next season. Okay. It's better, okay. For the te- okay. It's, it's better for the team where, okay, we can take that 40 million. We can eat okay. that dead money. You know, like, you got to understand. Okay. Okay, this is this is me personally. Everybody talking about a left tackle. Man, you can kick Tyron. Tyron was, was drafted to replace Tyron. So that time they came, he replaced you kick him to the outside, like get to a, 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 a nice left guard in the second round. But the first round, you need to be drafting the quarterback. I'm okay. You need to be drafting the quarterback and let him and Trey Land battle it out. Like, let let it go on this offseason. Because we know, me personally, 
that you go after this year. Okay, and so so you you're talking this. about 2025. All right, so yeah, in so what conditions? For the future. You talking about for the future? So what conditions are you holding Dak Prescott up to in order to get rid of him? What conditions hey, are you hey, holding him up to? It's just it's that it's not a good fit. Like, not a good fit. I, I, I've been with you eight years. I ain't accompanied nothing. It's like being in a relationship. If you're in a relationship with this girl mm-hmm. and y'all be dating eight years, you ain't got the key to her house or uh, uh, you ain't met her mama there, man, what you got? You know, like, that ain't nothing. It ain't nothing to build on. We ain't, in eight years, we ain't built nothing. So th- there should be there should be a rotations of thirty one other quarterbacks then, because outside well thirty because only there's been a Pat Mahomes in the last eight years that's active to win a Super Bowl is Pat Mahomes and Stafford are those the conditions are you talking about or are you talking about that this is the standard that only the Cowboys are upheld to is that Dak Prescott got to ultimately in order for you to to extend him what do he got to do for you for the 2024 season what he got to do he ain't going to be able to do it because he's already because not going to be able to do it before the season kick off. Is that what you're it. saying? It takes it take the team. It takes the team. Now it takes and the we team. We don't have the fun. We, we don't have the fun. Yes. We don't have the fun. And we don't. I feel like the culture. I feel like Jerry Jones is a big issue. Man, just shut up. Let them folks get a real GM. This okay. somebody, he. Get a, like you grab good. I don't. I don't like. We have. We grab grab great talent. Then it, it comes down like to the technique. Man, we we got one of the the, the poorest coaching staff in the NFL. We don't pay. We we don't pay the coaches. Like we don't we don't get top night coaches. Like you can't get a junior high coach and tell them go go coach. But, but, but wait 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 a minute. But but, but you staff. move it. You, you move it, man. You moving me, man. Is, is that that? fault or that's the coaching fault now or that's the Jerry it's, Jones fault you know who, who fought at it is, is all three of them who the is it it's huh? the organization it's from, it's from the top all the way down to, to the water boys you hear me? Yeah. everything needs to be stripped for real I'm just being honest for real <laughs> so, so, so you you yourself my, my dog my, my home skillet you don't have a solution basically Man, the solution is you get rid of Dak because man, it, that's going to organically I'll, help the I'll, coaching staff in the front yeah, office. Well, well, <laughs> see, see, what, what I what I gotta say is it ain't appropriate for, for the TV. Oh, um, I feel like this when Jerry Jones up there with heaven, we probably do something. Oh, I feel okay. Like that's it. No wait, who now, now? Who's more at fault right now? Is it Jerry or Steven? Now you know is Jerry it's better Steven. than Steven? Is Steven better than Jerry? <laughs> I feel like I feel like Gary better than Steven, but Steven is the type he cheap. He, he he's like the bargain shop. Right. Like when, when Jerry died, we really gonna go down because Steven ain't gonna pay nobody. We gonna go before y'all. We think we raise the hell or die. We, he don't pay nobody. All he right. So care. so 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 let let let's go to the future. Let's go to the future. Okay. So. You got you. You, you let that. You let Dak Prescott back. walk. You let him walk, okay? Because he's not signing for another contract here, okay? You're gonna mm-hmm. eat the forty million dollars because it's a one year deal. How much you gonna pay mm-hmm. Trey Lance? Trey Steer, we can pick Trey fifth year option up. How much, like you, know, you know how much his fifth year option is? You know how much that is? I think it's like twenty eight million. What's twenty eight million plus forty? Oh, that's just eight. So you're gonna pay sixty-eight million dollars for your quarterback room for twenty twenty five. Who we gonna go get? Okay, in the draft, think about this though. Okay, you pick Trey option up. Okay, that's just one year. Okay. Get Trey the opportunity to see what he's gonna do. You've been there three years. Okay, you this this approval year. You draft a quarterback this year. You get you a quarterback. So if if, if Trey don't work out in his proven year, you got a quarterback that's on his second year his rookie deal, and you got six eight million dollars. Boom, that's off the cap, and you got a, a quarterback that's on his second year his rookie deal. That's the reset. How much? How much quarterback money Parsons is gonna ask for? Man, is his contract gonna be north or south of Bosa? 
person already said on, on, on his on, on his podcast, he said he's not about he's not in it for the money and just like just being honest with you, bro. <laughs> I feel like deep down inside, but like Parson gonna leave. Like like cause Parson got a he wanna win, bro. He want to win. So so you think Parsons going to take – I I saw a post last year that he was complaining about Universal Studios, that they they, they charging too much money. He can't really get there because they charging too much money. You think Parsons is going to take a lower pay than what T.J. Watt or even Bosa is getting? No. Parsons going to get paid no. at least no, a quarter of a billion dollars. Get. And how much money will uh, C.D. Lamb demand? Exactly. C.D. Lamb, he's a diva. He won't need money. You have to. You gonna have to see this. This the game. What's the game? CD Lamb went no Jesse Jefferson. Jefferson Jeff, Jeff waiting on CD Lamb. So whoever whoever signed that deal, they trying to be right there or set the new market. See that's the game. See Jerry was dumb. You supposed to sign CD last year. You supposed to sign when CD went to break it out. You supposed to went on and locked him up. Come here, let me go and give you a healthy contract. That's what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to sign him a year before. But we lollygag. We wait till the last minute where, like you were speaking earlier, when that was put before, okay, the bag just went up. You know what I'm mean? saying? Sure. If you, you, signed, if, you wanted, if you wanted Dak below 50, $51 million, you would have had to ultimately jump on him like a cheap suit at the end of 2022. You could argue that you really? could have got him for 42, 43, 44 million because he he led exactly. the league in INTs. He had a broken thumb. He was hurt. So you could have jumped in and said, hey, Dak, hey, I feel you. I understand you. We trust you. And we're going to throw you this bag. And on top of that, by us believing in you, all we ask is for you to waive that trade clause. You probably would have been able to get in front of it. But by you waiting the way you're waiting, you still got the trade clause on the contract. You still got the biggest of the biggest bag. Because he just coming off of an all pro. He led the league, well, he tied the league in INTs in 2022, and now he lead the league in touchdowns the following year. So that shows improvement. So that's the problem that the Cowboys have. They waited too late and they waited too slow. But I give it what you said. Man, what's your name so I can lock you in, bro? Man, my name, my name is Quincy, man. Not I, Carter. I watch you all the time, Not Carter, though. Quincy. I watch you all the time, <laughs> Appreciate you, I man. Watch you all the time, bro. Real talk, exactly, man. We on the same page. Then, what, what, what really, what, what, how you really best the ball off? He's talking about, I got a no trade, no franchise call. Then, a lot of people don't even remember this long. He talking about, I led the lead in interceptions this year. He said, next year, I will not throw up on the 10 interceptions. I will lead the league in touchdown. He had 14, I think. Right. But he led the league in touchdown. He did with his head. And they just, mm, there's no money. No doubt, man. Appreciate <laughs> you, man. I thank you for calling in, bro. Uh, you hold it down, All right, man. Thank you a lot, man. All right, no Let doubt. Be, man. Keep, continue doing what you're doing. And, like, you got my number, man. Send me in the thing so I can send you a little donation to, to the Loud Nation because I'm down with the Loud Nation. No so doubt, keep man. Keep it real, man. Keep it real, man. Appreciate you, man. Uh, all right. That's Quincy, not Carl. Right, <laughs> That's Quincy from Mississippi, man. The Delta area, Cleveland. Uh, oh, no, Claus there. Claus there. Claus there. Claus there. Yeah. Shout out to American. Yeah, future sponsors there. Um. <laughs> <coughs> oh, KT, man. KT, big cowboy. You crazy as hell. All right, man. Last but not least, man, I got my guy, my dog, man, from the 214 closes out, man, with the uh, Cowboys. Darius, you're live, man. Talk to me, man. Darius! <laughs> Darius! Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Come on, man. What you going to beat me up with today, man? What you got? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, bro. What you got? Now, I meant to tell you, uh, you went there, man. You went there, uh, What'd you say? Uh oh. That's not good. What happened? Bearded Bros. You a twin. What's good? The Bearded Bros. What What happened? The twi- <laughs> twin. Twin. We- what happened? 
Oh, you talking about when? Hey, Darius. Ah! Oh man. Well, you know, he said something about the bearded bros, and uh. Goodbye. He was the last caller, man. We we'll figure out. What, he'll shoot me a message, man. Uh, hope all is well, man. Uh, with all what he was talking about, or, or was going to talk about. He gone, y'all. Uh, <laughs> they got him, man. They got him, man. The dogs went and got him. It's all good. Bartek! What is your profession? <laughs> they got him. It's a damn shame what they did to that dog, you know. So that, so that was you. You you, you called in and it, and it hung up? I, I don't know, bro. All right. Noel, I'm going to open the phone line just for you. I'm going to open it up just for you. It's 157. And you know, it's a long day. Tuesdays be long days for me because we got the uh, final word and everything. Then I got a meeting that I got to attend at uh, 4, 430. But uh, Noel. The first Noel. The you are the only participant in the conference. Thank you. All participants are muted. All right, I've opened the line up for Noel. Hello. Four six nine. What's on your mind? Yes, sir. Hey. Yes, sir. Hey, I know you. I know you finna ready though. So I'm going to make it quick, and I, I was going to type in the chat, I'll call in tomorrow, but I didn't want to leave you uh, hanging right there. Okay. Uh, this is a family show, so I hope ain't nobody drinking and driving. <laughs> hey. <laughs> you know who they go at, too. Oh, oh yeah. Great, yeah. man. He had me cooking up in the back. <laughs> I was cracking up, law. <laughs> I'm way trying to figure it out, your man. Feet, the way you just sit back in your seat and just pause for a minute, <laughs> man, that was epic. <laughs> Oh my gosh, man! Do you like my background music at least, man? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 lo I'm, lo I'm loving, it. I'm loving. Yeah, it. yeah, I, I thought that uh, that that would at least keep the uh, show moving a little bit yeah, faster, you know, yeah, it, get it, people it, in the groove. It, 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 it make the energy, you know, the energy, keep the energy up. You know, yeah, man? yeah, because <laughs> Lord yeah. knows I needed it. <laughs> Yeah, man. April Fool's on that one. Yeah. But look, but guess I'm I'm be I'm gonna be honest. The longer I waited, what I wanted to say it changed every time every time I listen to a caller. But uh, it, it this what I'm gonna say has something to do with football. Okay. But, my, but not necessarily on the field. Um, mm -hmm. man, I sit back and think about it. I remember a little old interview press conference. Um, Pat Mahomes said that. Uh, he really thinks that Prescott is a really, 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 really good quarterback. Yeah. And I remember you saying that they share something in common, which will be agents, right? Uh, I think I think they they share the same, like sister company. Or something sister like company, that. Under, yeah, under, yeah, under, yeah, under, yeah, under. yeah, yeah, yeah. Todd France, he don't he don't work under he works with CAA, although he's independent. Kind of like when you get a broker, or like a. Um, I don't want to dive too much into it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I get, I get no, what I, you're I saying. You yeah, too. yeah, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. All right, so pretty, pretty much where I'm going with it. I, at, the end, at the end of the day, because Dak even sometimes when they ask some questions about the contract negotiation, how it's going, yeah. he don't really, he don't even know what's going on because he's leaving it to his agents and things of that nature to uh to figure that out. And I just feel like they just want to make sure that on that back end, whenever it's time to pay my homes. To get that increase, that money will be available, and they don't right. want Dak to be the guy to undersell on the market. Yeah. So they're using Dak as a as a pun in this situation because we we should have been and we could have been done with that uh, contract and Jerry Jones. Now it's not that they don't want to pay Dak; they yeah. just afraid now, like the direction that the market is going when it comes to playing players, play, paying players, and paying the uh, the quarterback. They trying to. Not reset the market. They trying to make the market go back down. It's like they fighting against the market. Yeah. If you look at it, yeah. they the only th they trying to say the president of resetting the market the opposite, reversing it. Yeah. So they can get so they can get the credit for that. 
I know that's kind of out there, but that's what it looked like because we can all, uh, when I say this, uh, understand where we have holes and gaps. And that was just, we needed a running back and we needed uh, a couple of run stoppers. And that was pretty much it. Right. Even, uh, losing Dan, even losing Dan Quinn, we can still replenish a couple of those positions that um, that we need to fill and still put a good product on the field next year. And it don't take a very, very smart guy to, to realize that much. So it question what is it that the Georgians are really trying to do here. It's not the players. It's, it's the front office at, at this point because you guys, y'all break it down very, uh, very great in detail and key positions that we can use to help it. And if you guys can do that, I think they need to, you know, on the side, like email you anonymously and ask questions and, yeah. you know what I'm saying, try to value that information from you guys a little bit. Yeah, you know it's, it's, that's, that's my opinion. I appreciate that, bro. And I thank you for waiting, man. I know you said you waited for 45 minutes, man. And I and we needed that. We needed to hear, you know, your, your thoughts on all of this. The, the thing is, collectively, is that, these guys are not out for contracts for themselves, right? They, they know that, right. you know, it's a not for long league and, and, and there's a lot of emotions, right? You know, everybody right. said, hey, so everybody need to take a pay cut. But then when they laid out on the ground like a Ryan Shazier, then they say, hey, this is a real game. This is real sports. People are losing, you know, their their, their mm-hmm. lives out there almost their, their every day-to-day lives. And it's hard to feel or have some type of compassion for someone who's making – generational money right but at the end of the day it's entertainment and it's, the nfl stands for not for long and i think uh yesterday uh we, we lost a player uh even though he retired yeah. you know i think what was his name uh, he was he was the um the like brother the, uh, the brother of the uh, uh, tight end you know i forgot his name tip of my tongue buffalo, for buffalo. yeah 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 davis. he passed away yeah yeah davis yeah I'm davis and I ain't know whether or not how to respond on that because it's April, you know, first. So you don't know people playing kind of crazy April Fools jokes or what have Back you. Part. Yeah, yeah, Davis. Yeah. What's his first name? Y'all, y'all let me know. V- Vent- v- Vantage Davis? Oh. Vante? There you go. Vin- not Vance, Vin- Vante Davis. Vante right? Davis, yeah, yeah. So yeah, NFL yeah. not long. He young guy, man, 31, 32, 33-ish, you know. Yeah. So he have his whole life ahead of him. And you just never know. And that could be anybody. Somebody working at Payless right now that lost a co-worker. Or somebody working at Walmart or Amazon lost a co-worker. But when you play for the football league, man, you out there on the spotlight. So it, it's it's a small world. It's a short world. It's the evil world we live in. And life is very short, you know. So we never know. So all I can say is is that I should, should there be compassion towards Dak Prescott no not really because he's getting paid generational money but at the end of the day how his representative is going to rep him is like dude you can't take less when you're just coming off of an all pro year you're going to have to right. you keep yeah. you keep in there you be, and it's like you're trying to let you be trying to let the chat and the fans know that right. and it's like that's the part they not understand it ain't up to Dak it's like once Dak played very well yeah. This year, and and we could have been MVP. It was out of his hands at that point. Out of his hands. You know what I'm saying? The only it's way this will work, though, the only way this will work, Noel, is, um, and I hate to say this, the only way this will, will, will work for the Cowboys if an injury occur. That's the only way. Because then they Why can bench. Get paid? He, he, he get still, paid? like, like old boy got paid, but he it, it'll be an easier release. Because old boy got paid. Yeah. What's his name uh, uh, that played for the Atlanta Falcons? Now it's going to be a Kirk Cousin. He got hurt. Kirk Cousin. He got yeah. paid big money. He got hurt. So that would be the only way that they can move on. And one can argue that that was the same situation that happened to uh, 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 Romo. Romo by far yeah. was going to be the starting quarterback for the 2016 season. But he got hurt. Yeah, so that that's the he other tried, end. That's the look, business he, he end. He tried of. to come back too. He tried, he tried to, come to come back. back when he threw that touchdown to Terrence uh, Williams. Yeah, the back of the end. Zone. <laughs> yeah, he did. He yeah. did. He did. Oh. That was a hell of a drive. That was his last touchdown too. And I talked to T. Will uh, about that when we was working uh, with 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 the uh, quarterback trainer. And here's the other thing to it though, bro. When you when you think of that, you people got to understand. How did we get to that point? 
Tony Romo 2015, he was hurt that season. What people are trying to act like is that Dak Prescott and Tony Romo had the exact same years of seasons with the Cowboys when there are two different type of situations. Mm-hmm. Two different type of situations. Two different type of situations. It's just the only, the only thing that's the same is the playoffs. Is the front office. Oh, the front and office. The front yeah. office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it makes it makes it feel because they doing the same things that they normally do. So right. it makes the fans look at the situation the same, but totally different players. And it's, and it's like they plan it out just like the Romo situation. It's like that's how they want. They trying to play it out that way. But like you said, that's the only way they can hurt Dak if he um, yeah, unfortunately if he get hurt. If so, he get hurt, yeah. But you do you? Let me ask you this before you. I, I know you, it's time is time no, is you precious. Good. You good? This this the last thing I want to ask you. Um, do you think it's a a chance in Jerry Jones and their money? Like, hey, if we really we want to keep that, but we have to take this hit so we can get rid of that no trade clause. So we so because that got all the as long as they extend him, they still using the old contract verbiage. So Dak will always have the leverage over the team. So do you think they might just play him on this last year just to get out of that, so it can void the the the, the language in that contract? Because we can't do nothing like Dak got us by the balls. He do the team, I say. Yeah, he do got the team by the balls, and the only thing that you can do because he's not going to remove the trade clause unless you embarrass him to the the point whereas. You say, well, even though you won, we're just going to sit you and make Trey Lance the starting quarterback. Then there will be revolt, right? That's going to be like, you know, there, there, there's too much of the fan base is not that torn against Dak Prescott, right? So you're going to have that, that, that too much negativity. When you have people on this team like Overshones, the other uh, pl- pl- players like Brandon Cooks, C.D. Lamb to a degree saying that oh, Dak yeah. Prescott is him. He is our quarterback. He is our leader, right? Whereas you didn't, you didn't have that same cry in 2016 for Tony Romo. T. Will is not a boisterous person, right? T. Will, when he said oh, yeah. that he would love to have Romo as his guy, but there's documented uh, records even with Barry Church saying that Dak won the locker room. Dak also won people over to a degree. I think there's excerpts that even Jason Witten was like, well, Dak is that dude, you know, and that's Tony Romo's yeah, best that, friend. That surprised me. Yeah. Yeah. That surprised yeah. a lot of folks. Yeah. So I don't think that Trey Lance, people got to fail to realize that I don't think that Trey Lance have that type of cachet, nor do Cooper Rush, you know, of any of these quarterbacks that they even draft will have that type of pool in the locker room. So Dak is also locker room guy. So you, you, you got layers upon layers, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I do I do understand what Queso is saying, no revolt if we, if we win it. Winning do cures a lot of things. But ultimately, in order for that to happen, Dak got to be hurt for that other quarterback to step in and to ultimately win, you know, that's the only problem, you know. So, so Dak Prescott for the 2025, if will he be here? That's a very tangible. That's the very thing that you can say is it, it, is is murky because you got to let 2024 play out. If they don't sign him for this season, you know, it'd be kind of crazy. Yeah, but you you know how you say long? They have a deadline because once the the preseason kick off, you know, Dak he ain't talking no contracts when the season starts. It's a wrap. It's, it's a wrap. And, and that old saying, deadline make deals, that's an 80s and 90s thing that the Jones family got to move on from. These other teams, they're not waiting around for deadline make deals. They are making the deals. They are sitting there saying that they got to get their player now. They got to get that difference maker now. And if you're saying with that old saying deadline make deals, no, the salary cap make deals. People are saying that we got the salary cap now that's in the way. Well, there are teams that absolutely hire a salary cap person that know how to handle massive amount of money, massive amount of contracts that can get things busy. 
That's why the Eagles are back in it, and they signed their quarterback for a quarter of a billion dollars. That's why they were able to sign A.J. to a $100 million contract and other people like the tight end to over 80 to $90 million contracts because they are getting in front of it. The Joneses are going with that archaic mindset to say deadline may deal, and all they're doing is driving up the price, hurting themselves, shooting themselves in the foot. And GMs usually uh, they do they do um, tedious little tedious work. Yeah. And I doubt Jerry Jones. Right. <laughs> Want to do the tedious? See, uh, he he got he got to go, man. Not, not from the team, but from there he need to relinquish that role and let somebody that's dedicated to just that do that. That's all they want to do is that. You know what I'm saying? They eat, sleep, dookie, just that, nothing else. Right, right, and that's what they need. You know what it is before I let you go? Yes, sir. It's like instead of having a CPA to handle your taxes, they got themselves doing their own taxes. They doing the turbo taxes taxes. themselves. You know what I'm saying? They go on there and they say, hey, man, we we deduct this, and we uh, this will appreciate eventually, and they are doing their own taxes. Although they can get it done, there's still so much that they just don't know. And you would never right. ever think that an organization that's worth north of twelve billion dollars don't know how to handle their business as it relates to the to, to the to this right here, the salary cap, they because don't. they're doing it they themselves don't. and they're not qualified. And there's nobody in the building to tell them, "Hey, man, just let the CPA handle that," because you guys are not qualified. Wow. Yeah, we go on and on, man. We yeah. go on and on about this. Cause after those Super Bowl years, it's been a big drought, man. And yeah. Hey, that, that Super Bowls, they've been, been lingering around for us for a minute, but it just don't come to a point that someday, because you guys are doing a hell of a, hell of a work out here, man. You, boss, um, I can't name everybody else, because y'all don't know. There's everybody, like man. But everybody, everybody from Steel to... Uh, uh, what's the name Lombardi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vach Lombardi. We got, you Vach, know. Yeah, Vach. Well, Craven Cowboys. So we got it in on the ladies' side. We got Craven Cowboys, man. We, <laughs> we got some we got some people, man. Uh, there's there's uh, Star, Stargazer. So much, I, I want to say this. Y'all doing so much great work to the point. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't, I just can't, I just don't want them to turn our team down the way that they doing, man, over the glory years in the 90s. You know what I mean? That's that's what it looked like. But you guys are hold y'all like the glue. Y'all holding it together. That way, when this pass by, we gonna come back and look at some of this old content and and see you know how much right you guys was and and how much y'all was for the team and not you know what I'm saying with the yeah. politics. And shit. Man, hell yeah, man! I appreciate yeah, that's you all so I got much for man. the day, man. Thank yeah, you, man. man. I appreciate you, Law, man. You keep me going, bro. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. And how about them boys? How about them boys, man? You know, I, the reason why I passed him up is because I thought that that, you know, I had my other guy, Noah. It had two Noahs in there, so. Goodbye. He's another Noah that's on there, so now I know that he's the different Noah. We do a lot of work for the community. We are the biggest fan base, and we are the biggest biggest and i mean this biggest content creations in any of the lands cowboys content creators there's a new one every day uh if i start naming folks it's guaranteed that i'm gonna leave out somebody's name to the point that yeah on youtube it's a little saturated right but at the end of the day you guys can still listen to your favorite content creator and get it from a different point of view right that there's so many people, man, I encourage people, more and more people to continue to start up a YouTube page. You know, you know, we got what we got a whole syndicate flagship station. One oh five point three. The fan is on YouTube. Right. No other. You like you don't have Phillies. You don't have Washington. You don't have Giants that's jumping into this lane. So it's really you got to pick a corner, jump in it and talk your love and your passion. It could be a million of us, and I still do this, right? Because this is giving me a relief, right? This is this is my passion. I, I'm talking my passion. And when you find your passion, like I said, there's two most important days of your life. The day you was born and the day you realize your passion. So this is what I do. 
We talk Cowboys football and beyond. Yes, I got backgrounds and a whole bunch of other things, right? But this is what I do. So I don't look at this as work for me sitting down talking two or three hours for a thousand views or what have you. Uh, I just know for sure that the things that I said and say, I want you guys to go back and look at the catalogs, right? Go back and look at what I said about D-Law. Look about uh, look at what I said about the franchise tax and how it hurt us. Look at what I said during the time frame when I said that we should go out there and get a DK Metcalf. Juxtaposed to paying all of that money towards a Michael Gallup. No, no offense to Michael Gallup, right? Look at what I said or what can help this team out. Look at what I said to, to, to a degree, even with Dak Prescott. I'm batting 1,000 with that because most people think that what I'm saying is only covering Dak Prescott. But the truth and the reality of it is that these are the things that Dak Prescott ultimately need. Remember, just last year and the year before that, me and Boss, we had a disagreement about Dak Prescott. Is he elite or not? And I said, no, he's not elite. That doesn't mean that I hate Dak Prescott or that I despise Dak Prescott, right? It just means that, hey, if he's not elite, there's some people right now saying, no, nah, Lord, he's elite. Well, hey, I get all of that. But this elite Dak Prescott would still need run game. He's going to have to have a defense around him to shut down and stop the run. I think that, hey, if John Elway can get all the way, he had yellow teeth, and they realize, hey, he needed run game and he need defense. The great John Elway. You put those circumstances around Dak Prescott, he will win you one. But so many people, they will look at, as far as Dak Prescott comparable to, let's say a uh, quote unquote, I'm going to use the golden child, the 3%, Patrick Mahomes. As far as Dak Prescott is from Pat Mahomes, is even further from Andy Reid to Jason Garrett. That's even further. So what y'all trying to do is close the gap with Mike McCarthy. That's not going to happen collectively if you don't have run game. The great Aaron Rodgers been in the league for over 18 to 19 years, and he only got one ring. To this point of the career that even Peyton Manning had, I think that at this point he had three or maybe two playoff wins in his eighth season. I think Peyton Manning didn't win his first ring until ninth season. And Peyton Manning was birthed. He was birthed with a Marshall Falk. From Marshall Falk, he went from Marshall Falk without a drop-off to Edron James. Don't y'all know how crazy good that is? In his entirety of his career, he had a Marvin Harrison, a Dallas Clark, a Hall of Fame offensive line. And he couldn't win Super Bowls. And he was drafted in the first round. And anybody that's on this planet, if you had your life on the line and you had Tony Dungy, Ducks to post to Jason Garrett, you would say, hey, give me, give me Tony Dungy, man. I just figure out the rest, man, even though he's a defensive coach. Hey, Law was a different era. Yeah, but they look what I said. He had freaking Marshall Falk for Marshall Falk to get to get birthed at Adrian James in his youth. And we're not even talking about Reggie Wayne and things. There's weapons on every single level. And yet there will be people who will argue with me and said that Dak Prescott had the same. He had a Marvin Harrison out of Dez, who's not Marvin Harrison, by the way. He had a Reggie Wayne out of uh, T. Will. And that's not the same, baby. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Freeney and Bob Sanders, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Shoot. <laughs> but people people will look at Dak and say, well, Dak is whack. But Peyton Manning was all-star, world-class. And the numbers very comparable. And they kept building and building and building and building and building and building and building around Peyton Manning. Even when he went to the Broncos. Can somebody name me that team who he had on defense and offense there? Drum says, and I love it, Dak had Elliott, CD, Amari, Schultz, 
a great offensive line, according to who? He had a hurt offensive line. On top of that, he had an older Dez. And on top of that, Amari. Here's the crazy thing. He didn't come into the latter part. I'm talking about from birth, Peyton Manning had Marvin Harrison. And one can argue, Dez is not, and I love Dez, but he ain't, look, he ain't Marvin Harrison. World-class defense. Hey, what, what made them realize they needed to go get their world-class defense is what happened to them in that doggone Super Bowl against the Seahawks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My mic cutting up because I'm spitting too much truth. Can y'all hear me now? Can y'all hear me better now? Can y'all hear me better now? <clears throat> they canceling the mic. What about now? Is it better now? <laughs> Come on, is it better now? Appreciate everybody. So I'm not making bevies of excuses for Dak Prescott, but what I'm saying is, is that Cowboys better, better, even if they're going to move on from Dak Prescott, you better make sure that you have your replacement. I'm going in and out. Just refresh your thing. I, I got good signals here. <laughs> yeah, Louis. Yeah, 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 yeah. But let me get on up out of here, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was. Is it better now? I'm uh, spitting too much truth. Too much truth. <laughs> yes, indeed. But but that's just what it is. And and what I'm saying is, all right. So let's use 16 for an example. What did we do to build upon that off of 2016? We went and drafted. Did we go draft a taco in 17? <laughs> ah, shit. I can't make this stuff up. People were complaining about Tyron Smith in 17. He was hurt. What did we do to build? What did we do to build, ladies and gentlemen? My guy in 2017, Terrence Williams, who they just paid, he was out there chasing strippers. He was racing them on the street. Shout out to my guy, T-Will. What did we do? In 2018, I remember y'all was talking about getting rid of Dak then. What did we do? What was our first round draft pick there in 2018? I need to know. What did we do, ladies and gentlemen? <clears throat> but it is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. At the end of the day, the truth is stranger than fiction. <laughs> Shout out to my guy T-Will. He wasn't chasing strippers. He, he was out there racing. I think he won too, by the way. But at the end of the day, what should this team do? My truth is this right here. If you wish to get rid of Dak, then be sure to have his replacement ready. I think that even the Colts, when they got rid of Peyton Manning, they had to suck to get that done. And they got our Andrew Luck. And he was by far a very talented quarterback. I don't even know if he even won a playoff game. But he was very good. Injuries came about. Y'all let me know what Andrew Luck playoff record is. <laughs> and how many quarterbacks they've been looking for since Peyton Manning. 
how many quarterbacks the D, the uh, Denver Broncos been looking for since Peyton Manning. It sounds easy to get rid of, but you got to make sure you have your replacement there. Even though the 2024 season, the 2024 season is amongst us. And the drought is still here. We talked about the other day, Moses. I took you out of church, wandering around in the desert for 40 years. Even he was given an ultimatum. He took and led those folks away from all of the other things that the world was beating them up on and they still wasn't satisfied. He went to the mountains, came back with 10 commandments. 10 of them. And they was already worshiping something else. They was already giving up hope and desire. They turned a 10 day trip into 40 years. He went to go pray because he was angry for him to come back. And the Lord spoken to him and said, I can smite everyone and keep you alive. And he pleaded with them. He pleaded with the God, the Lord, and said, don't smite these people. Forgive them. So verily, verily, I say unto you all, What are you going to do? How angry are you? How bad are you? What are you willing? How much effort are you putting into your desire, your loyalty? Where do you stand 10 toes down at? Hmm? It said Andrew Luck 4-4 four and four in the playoffs. That's good numbers right there. It's good numbers right there. 4-4. Four and, four. and he was a first-round draft pick. Trying to fill in the shoes of Peyton Manning. One can argue them shoes was twice the size of he can, what he can imagine. People said that he was going to be better than Peyton Manning. He's drafted in the first round, too. Don't even come close. Hmm? So be careful what you wish for. But write this down. If you want a thing bad enough to go out there and fight for, to work day and night for, to work day and night for, to work day and night for, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep, if all of your desires of it makes you quite mad that you don't get time and it makes you hold everything tawdry and cheap, if life itself seems empty and useless without it and all that you scheme and dream is about it, if you'll gladly go out there and sweat for it, fret for it, or play it, or to lose all terror of your mind, if you would simply go after the thing you want with all of your capacity, strength and scargastity with faith, hope, and confidence, and stern pertinacity. If neither cold poverty or famish or the fame or the sickness of your body or brain can turn you away from the thing you want, it dog in the grim and besiege and beset with the help of Almighty Cowboy Nation and everyone that's listening, you will get it. Rich! I can't take this no more, man. Slap him, slap him. On my way out, baby, I got some new stuff for y'all. Roll those credits. Motivational love. Tell me one thing, one thing in your life that is great that came as a result of being comfortable. Most of us aren't defeated in one decisive battle. We are defeated one tiny, seemingly insignificant surrender at a time that chips away at who we should really be. It isn't that you wake up one day, decide, that's it, I'm going to be weak. No. It is a slow, incremental process. It chips away at our will, it chips away at our discipline. Move out of your comfort zone. 
It's the courage to move into your zone of discomfort where you feel awkward and clumsy and sometimes alone. The comfort zone is one of the greatest enemies of human potential and of your potential. The people that are really successful, they're not looking for comfort. They're looking for excitement. They're looking for potential. Give up this old idea. I just want to be comfortable. Quit lying to yourself. You know you seek more than comfort. So understand that when you're trying to avoid the pain, when you're trying to avoid the struggle, when you're trying to avoid the hard things in life, you are actively choosing to be average. Start putting some pressure on. Put some pressure on yourself. Get out here and get about it. Once you figure out that you're in a race amongst billions of people that live in this world, you're in a race by yourself. You have a purpose and it's your purpose, not everybody else's purpose. It is your purpose and only your purpose and it's your race. That means you are persistently bigger than your excuses. You are persistently bigger than feeling lazy. And you are persistently beating the feelings that typically stop you. Stop coming up with excuses. Don't give yourself permission to continue to live a small life. You can't fit a big dream into a small life. Give yourself permission to go for it, to test yourself, to challenge yourself, to live full. When the sun comes up, you've got all the books, you've got all the tapes, you've got all the access. Now it's time to hunt. And what separates you from everybody else is that when it's time to hunt, you're ready to hunt. What I've come to appreciate when you're working on changing your life, changing some bad habit, getting out of addictive situations or relationships, or working to build a dream or making a difference in our society. It's hard. There are going to be all kinds of challenges that we all must face. You cannot live in this world without a challenge. You cannot live in this world without a struggle. Greatness is right on the other side of pain. So what are you running from it for? You say you want to be successful, then push through it. Stop making excuses and go get it! The lack of self-discipline is the major cause of failure, frustration, underachievement, and unhappiness in life. It causes us to make excuses and sell ourselves short. Perhaps the two biggest enemies of success, happiness, and personal fulfillment are first the path of least resistance and second, the expediency factor. The path of least resistance is what causes people to take the easy way in almost every situation. They seek shortcuts to everything. They arrive at work at the last minute and leave at the first opportunity. They look for get rich, quick schemes and easy money. Over time, they develop the habit of always seeking an easier, faster way to get the things they want, rather than doing what is hard but necessary to achieve real success the expediency factor, which is an extension of the law of least resistance, is even worse when leading people to failure and underachievement. This principle says people invariably seek the fastest and easiest way to get the things they want, right now, with little or no concern for the long-term consequences of their behavior. In other words, most people do what is expedient, what is fun and easy, rather than what is necessary for success. Every day, and every minute of every day, there is a battle going on inside of you between doing what is right, hard, and necessary, like the angel on one shoulder, or doing what is fun, easy, and of little or no value, like the devil on your other shoulder. Every minute of every day, you must fight and win this battle with the expediency factor and resist the pull of the path of least resistance if you truly desire to become everything you are capable of becoming. And then when you see people take on more responsibility and decide that they're going to aim up and, and confront their suffering honestly and forthrightly, that their lives get better and the lives of people around them get better too. And so it's, that's very strange as well because it also means that the pathway to less suffering is through suffering, right? And that's kind of, that would be hopeful if the world was constituted that way. It's like, well, there's suffering. How do you make it worse? Run away. How do you make it better? 
confront it. Yeah, but it's suffering. It's like, yeah, but it's there. There it is. It's right there. It's a precondition for existence or something like that. And it's like you have something important to do as well. And you confront it. And that's the pathway to transcending it. We need to figure out like now today, what what is, you know, the best way to live your life? What is the, you know, there, there's got to be ways you can be putting forth the most positive energy. I mean, we know objectively what's causing pollution. We know objectively what's causing birth defects and, you know, and are, we're taking in too much chemicals and not enough vitamins. We know objectively all this stuff. We know how to organize our world and yet we don't do it. We know how to organize our health and yet very few people do it. We know all these things. The right path to like being like a happy healthy person is to do all the shit that we already know you're supposed to do take care of your body take care of your health take care of your mind your stress meditate be kind to people we all know that I mean, you ask anybody they know how to get by and to be the most evolved version of you that you can be I mean it's not like a, a magical checklist if you talk to people about it you said okay here you're, you got a person you want to improve them what are the things you're gonna do to them? Okay, well, if I was a life coach, the first thing I would say is this guy's got to get on a diet that makes him healthy. I don't mean a diet just to lose weight. I mean just healthy foods in your body, many, many vegetables. Start working out your body and get a better sense of like how this machine feels when it's moving, it's flowing better, there's less tension in it, your mind feels like relaxed and, and you enjoy every single moment of the day better. Step one, everybody knows that step, right? What's step two? Be cool to people. Be nice to as many people as you can. Smile at as many people as you can. Have them smile back at you. Tip well when you go to restaurants. Just do the most you can. Be as nice as you can and just still manage to not have people walk all over you. Just get through this life as nice as you can. The average human is capable of unbelievable improvement. That's, that's the thing that's my superpower. I don't think I'm special. I just realized in looking at the science that humans actually are capable of this incredible amount of change. It is the strategy that our species took to be able to pass knowledge on to a culture rather than having to have everything be instant. And in having that layer where we can drink in the culture and read books and learn from other people, and you know, even now we're all learning from things that people thought thousands of years ago and wrote down like it's insane. It travels through to you and all of that wisdom stored in culture so that as your parents are teaching you things, they're actually encapsulating a ton of the wisdom that is enjoyed, whether it's from religion or books or whatever, like you're bathed in a culture that is giving you all of this incredible information. And so recognizing how powerful and potent that is, is incredibly meaningful. But you have to understand that you have to allow yourself to believe that you can learn from that culture in the same way that everybody else can. And that's what you're designed to do. Now, for me, that completely gave me the confidence, and I put confidence in air quotes because it's not like I believe something specific about myself. I just believed that the human animal is capable of this extraordinary change. And so now I just needed to point myself in that direction. Now, once, this is the key, once I realized that I could get better at anything, it dawned on me that how I spend my time is a spiritual consideration. And I didn't want to die with potential that I failed to turn into skill set. That to me, that speaks to me. How much of my potential can I actually turn into skill set and get good at this stuff and push and grow and improve? Like that to me is just this incredibly intoxicating. Thing. So for me, the discipline, the confidence, all of that comes from recognizing human, the human animal, nothing special about me. The human animal is capable of extraordinary change. I'm gonna have to put time in doing it, but I'm capable of getting this change. Therefore, I can do anything I set my mind to. Therefore, it really matters what I choose to spend my time on. Therefore, I want to put structure and discipline in my life so that I can move forward on things that excite me, that matter to me. Because I really can't have this big crazy dream that I'm thinking of. So my discipline is really my desire. We answered, I talked stuff, I thought we had it. But it goes to show you who's a better team. And I'm sticking Cowboys. They, you're, they, you're crying. I'm hurt. I love my Eagles. I don't believe it. You're going to flap the hat one more time for the Eagles for the hard fight they did? 
Let's go, birds fly, eagles fly, still Super Bowl champion. <laughs> all right, man. Appreciate everybody, man, for tuning in. Hey, that's all the time that we have for this moment. I, I think that I will always kind of like end the episode with uh, some type of motivational clip video. Uh, check out my uh, motivational page. I always thought about what I'm going to do with the Law Nation 2.0 page. So we're going to have a lot of motivational stuff over there. So check that out so that you guys can see and hear what I listen to on a day-to-day operation. That's been my time. I really thank each and every last one of you all. Come out the closet and <laughs> come out the closet and stop. Let's go. Yep out. Peace.